Valentine's Day is upon us, fellas, so make sure you're ready for wherever the night may take you. Our friends at Manscaped, the global leader in men's below-the-waist grooming, are here to tell you that you need to use the best tools for the job so you can be ready for anything on that special day. Two million men are already trusting Manscaped's products. Make sure you're one of them. Your girl can't think of what to get you this year? Tell her to get the gift that's for you and her. The best way to get started is with the Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0. Full of the best products to keep you looking, smelling, and feeling nice. The Perfect Package 3.0 is led by the revolutionary third generation Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer, which features a cutting edge and skin safe ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. It's also waterproof, which prevents a mess on the bathroom floor and in the sink, especially when it's time for Cupid to shoot his arrow. The Perfect Package 3.0 also comes with a pair of Manscaped boxers, which are easily the comfiest boxers I've ever had, and products to keep the boys in tip-top shape. With the new refined cologne signature scent by Manscaped to top it off, this is the perfect package for your perfect package. Get 20% off plus free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com by using code DIGGINGDEEP20. Welcome to the Digging Deep ATV MX Podcast with your host, Two-time defending ATV motocross national champion, Cody Jansen. Am I on air? What's up, everybody? We're We're back. back. I'm your host, Cody Jansen, and welcome to episode number 44 of the Digging Deep ATV MX podcast, presented by our title sponsor, CSD Tires, available for purchase at shop.csdtires.com. The original plan for this episode was to get Joe Bird on, but he had something come up in his schedule this week. This is the one week that Shane Hit couldn't fit us in because he's out of town. Pat Brown, John Natale, Cody Gibson, they all couldn't make it happen for us yet this week. So last minute, we pulled together a preseason update show for you guys, and frankly, you guys are going to enjoy the heck out of everything that you're about to hear. We have Logan Tremellen coming up from the Tremellen Media House. We'll talk to him about the biggest topics and storylines of this offseason. Former Pro-Am champ and Rookie of the Year Brandon Hogue will join us to update us on his injury and preview his third season as a pro. We're hoping to get Jeffrey Rostrelli on here. He's trying to fit us into his schedule, hoping to make that happen for you guys. We also have Pro-Am runner-up Michael Allred joining us tonight as he's looking to make his full-time move to the pro class. You're going to really enjoy him. And finally, Ford Brothers racing mechanic Nick Hickey will join us for some behind-the-scenes looks at the Ford Brothers racing program and an update on their switch to Blue Crew. So as you can see, we have a stacked show for you tonight. And credit to those guys for last minute all clearing their schedules enough to fit us in um, for a quick conversation. But first, let's thank our sponsors who are all on board for another episode and another great season here at the Digging Deep ATV MX podcast. Starting with CST Tires, go to shop.csttires.com. Yamaha, thanks to Blue Crew, Valvoline, SSI decals, DID Racing Chain, Namira Technologies, Bronco ATV and UTV components, Launderville Steel Enterprises and Concrete Supply, Forworks Carbon, DP Brakes, Gripped Gloves, Factory 43, Bikes, Trikes, and Quads, LLC, and Manscaped. Get 20% off and free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. And guys, I know we made fun of Brooke for not being fully informed on Manscaped's full line of products, but I can't blame her because they've been coming out with all kinds of new stuff lately. My beard trimming ability has never been better, plus their nose hair trimming weed whacker is the best nose hair trimmer 
I've ever used and it's not even close. So check out Manscaped. I wish I would have sooner. Get 20% off with free shipping by using code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. Support all these great companies that support us. And for any products that fall through the cracks, click that Rocky Mountain ATVMC banner on our website to help us out. As we all prep for the 2021 season, it's that build slash freshen up time of year. No matter what off-road gear or parts you need, Rocky Mountain ATVMC has you covered, I covered, they got us all covered. So before you buy, click that Rocky Mountain ATVMC banner on our website to help us out and help you out. Now, the 30-second board is up, it's sideways, and the gate is down. Time to dig deep, guys. Let's go. All right, guys, we have a fun episode ahead of us tonight. And this first guest is a guy that I'm a big fan of. Um, I've been a fan of his work for years now. I've hired him to do some of my own photography work the last few seasons. And he's an industry insider who loves the sport just like I do. Brought to you by Factory 43. Check out their full line of top-notch Nerf bars, bumpers, and grab bars at factory43atv.com. From Tremellon Media House, it's Mr. Logan Tremellon. What's up, buddy? Thanks for joining me on the Digging Deep ATVMX podcast. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me on, Cody. Well, man, you've been a you've been a rider. You've been strictly a photographer. Now you're branching out as more of a media source, I feel like. So when someone asks you why, why do you support and love this sport like you do? Um, what do you tell them? Because I feel like this is something that uh, both of us kind of share, but this is something that plenty of people ask me too. So uh, I wanted to start this off by asking you why. Yeah, so me and my brother, our whole family has been in racing, racing boats, racing quads, racing just around the house for our entire lives. So um, I was in racing ATVs. I think I raced for seven years and um, I was getting out of it just for kind of health issues. Like there were so many seasons where I couldn't race because one, we didn't have the money at the fir- at first or two, I was just recovering from injuries. And um, it just started to happen that I started shooting when I was there because I was like getting into vlogs and I was having fun with that. So I didn't make videos of my brother because he was in pro class. So it all started there. And then I had opportunities to start shooting with uh, ATV riders. And I traveled all across the country shooting all the works races, a bunch of desert truck races, a bunch of all the ATV races. And it just kind of grew from there. Um, I started to branch off doing my own thing at the ATV races and it's obviously I've already had a love for racing. I have a love for action sports, motorsports, whatever it is. And um, then I found this love for creating. And just in the past year, really, I'm happy. I'm actually happy that you picked up on it. I'm branching off into not just photography, but like a media brand. I'm trying to find a way that I can bring like promotion to not even just ATV motocross, but all of these different action sports, motorsports that I love. And I keep on saying both of those things because I don't, I think they're kind of two in the same thing. Um, one media source that I like really look up to and that I would love to become one day uh, is Red Bull. They're, they are like uh, an advertising. Um, what am I trying to, what word am I looking for here? They were like kings at advertising, kings of yeah. promoting, especially when it comes to action sports and motorsports. And I'm like, what mm-hmm. can I do now? What can I do in the next five years that'll not only allow me to help promote the sport more, but help promote myself more, help promote all of these things, all of these race series, all of these different types of sports that I love. Mm-hmm. So I've just, it grew from a passion of racing. It grew from a a love of creating. And yes, I'm just trying to do as much as I can to promote the sport, to promote different sports that I love and promote everything that I can for myself. I love it. And I I love uh, what you do for the sport. I mean, I feel like people like you, uh, not just simply photographers, but people like you who are putting on such a great front for the sport. I mean, our sport relies on people like you so heavily um, that, I mean, you're a, you're a very valuable asset to ATV motocross and it's cool to see you branch out doing other things. You're broadening your, your kind of your market, your reach. Um, But again, like, I feel like the thing that's cool about, uh, Uh, an artist type person like you, you see things differently than what uh, the person like me does, who's not, you know, artistic like that. And I feel like you have a vision. um, I guess I like 
the different visions of photographers, of media people, of uh, artists like you. So I feel like your vision of what you want for yourself, the stuff you try to expose in the sport. Um, and just, again, like your little bit of different look at things. It's one that I really like. I really enjoy. I really connect with. That's why I've been uh, drawn to your stuff from the start. Um, but I guess to tie this, this up, I mean, you're such a valuable asset to, to ATV motocross. So it's cool to uh, have this conversation with you, obviously. And then to expose it to all of our listeners on digging deep is awesome. Yeah, I really appreciate it. And like, like you said, um, all of our media guys have different perspectives. So like there might be four or five of us on the track all day, every day at the races, but there are four completely different videos. There exactly. are five completely different types of photos that go out. Exactly. Which, uh, I, I had this conversation with Josh when we had him on a couple episodes ago, but everybody's vision is different. So it's not, it's not like a competition. I'm sure you, you feel it. Uh, you don't, you don't see it as a competition. It's like, everybody's kind of, um, just trying to build up this sport, right? Like that's what everybody's trying to do. And everybody's out there for the betterment of it. And it's kind of like you guys all work together. And just like you said, everybody's so unique that I feel like, uh, it's so easy for everybody to coexist. But again, you're, you're somebody who I, uh, I really connect with really enjoy your stuff. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, and, and two, like, uh, I feel like I enjoy, or I, uh, relate to your hustle. Cause I feel like I hustle my ass off at some of the stuff and I know you do the same thing. So, uh, yeah. I love to, I love to see that. Um, but you told me, uh, that just in the last few hours, um, you were hanging out with the champ. So, uh, how's Chad Weenan looking Danica and Chad just welcomed their second child into the world. Uh, so congrats to them, of course. Um, tell me, uh, I guess what you guys were up to and, uh, what's been keeping you busy this off season. Yeah, so this offseason, obviously, I've been putting a huge focus on trying to do a lot of uh, promoting through social media, build not just my channels, but try to put or try to direct a lot of focus to ATV motocross, to everything that I shoot, everything that I shot in 2020, at least just repurposing all of that content, resharing it. But um, over the past last weekend, I went down to uh, North Carolina, shot with Michael Allred, just testing some gear, looking how he was just you know, shooting, getting back into it. Cause it's been a while since I've shot anything yeah. um, this week or just a few days ago, I decided or I've been planning this trip, but I came down to Florida. I went to Weenan's house. I shot an interview with him. Uh, then I went down, shot an interview with Joel and Jeffrey yesterday. I filmed them riding all day today. Today I filmed with Weenan and Linquist riding all day. Wow. Um, so what we're up to is I've just been trying to, get creative try to branch out try to find a way to bring more awareness to like some of the bigger stories like we talked about this i want to bring more aware awareness to the bigger stories in our sport mm -hmm. and this there's it's there's a personal reason to it is one i really want to challenge myself creatively i'm using a bunch of new gear i'm trying to just make better videos make better stories just grow as a creator okay and at the same time there's so much opportunity there to help the sport grow to give like awareness on these big stories like behind the scenes with chad and link was training behind the scenes with joel on the new yamaha behind the scenes with jeffrey who's been really mm -hmm. quiet this off season yep um i just have some ideas of stories that i think are huge in the sport and i just want to try to create the best story that i can around mm -hmm. them so i'm down here in florida just experimenting just trying to create the best stories that i can it's awesome. I mean, that's why I feel like too, I mean, obviously creatively, artistically, you know, I, I like your stuff, but also like when you talk like this, I mean, your vision and my vision are so similar. Um, you know, that's kind of a lot of the reason why we're doing what we're doing is, uh, you know, I, I want to expose some of those stories and, and it's not necessarily the big stories, right? Like there's stories throughout the entire class. And then like you said, and we've had this conversation previously, but the behind the scenes stuff, like when I watch other action sports stuff, whether it's two wheel or stick and ball sports or whatever, the behind the scenes stuff is what really gets me going. Like, that's what I like the most. So, um, I love, I love what you're putting together and now to hear that you're really bringing it to life. You're on this trip, you know, adding, uh, getting, you know, creating content. I feel like, um, there should be a lot of listeners out there with big smiles on their faces with what's to come. Yeah, I think the same way. I'm like when it comes to all the content I've made in the past, like even now I'm posting a lot of my 2020 videos on YouTube page just to start putting stuff out there. Mm -hmm. And I'm not happy with any of it because there's no storyline. There's no backstory. There's no behind the scenes. There's nothing. And like 
it's something that I've always, at least the past two years, I've really like let go. Like I'm out on the track all day. I'll shoot all day. And when I get off the track, I don't go and shoot people in their pits or I don't shoot them on the gate or whatever. Now I can say I didn't have a lot of time or I was already so busy, Mm -hmm. but still, I mean, that's just, there's so much story there. There's so much that I'm missing out on and whether I have to bring somebody on to help me shoot this year or just push myself more at the races, I just really want to challenge myself. And this trip is just the beginning of it. Well, and, and I don't want you to sell yourself short either because uh, you were so gracious to send me some of your albums um, from the past couple seasons, right? And when I saw all the riders on there and then to think of all the photos that are on there too, it it's really incredible. I found myself thinking like, how does this dude do it? You know, your workload at the races uh, crammed into those couple days um, had, I mean, it was, cr- it's crazy. It's crazy to think of. So uh, I know you're already, you know, grinding your ass off. Um, but you know, again, like you have, you're obviously motivated. You obviously have this vision. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's coming together and that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, race season this year was insane with one person. I mean, I would shoot from sun up to not necessarily sundown once I got off the track. I normally tried to get away from my camera as much as I could, you know. But um, this year, yeah, I want to try to build out a team to not even just help me shoot at the races, but to help me be more consistent and post more on social media. And then at the truck races, I'm taking on some more stuff there. So then I need more people to help me there. And then I want more behind the scenes there. So then I'm taking on two series. And then I have some other opportunities that are coming in that even might overlap with those two series. So, yeah, there's a lot on my plate. And I definitely want to bring more people on just to not only make it easier on myself, but just to create better content, get more coverage of every sport that I'm covering Mm -hmm. and just continue to build out this media source that I'm trying to do. Yeah. Well, again, uh, to ATV motocross, when you're looking at it specifically that way, um, you're such a valuable asset and to, to hear, uh, you know, kind of where you want to take this thing. Um, it's got me excited. So, uh, let's move on a little bit. You spent some time with Chad. You talked about that Joel, Jeffrey, all these guys, um, Michael Allred, who's got, we're coming up, uh, we got him coming up on the show. So that'll be exciting. Um, but, uh, let's, you know, go ahead and look towards the 2021 season that's on the horizon for us now. Um, Chad's going to look to match Gary Denton's record, eight pro class titles. Uh, Chad comes in with a program that'll be without major change really. Um, but you can't say that for many other guys, Joel Hetrick, uh, kind of like you referenced his switch to Yamaha and CSC tires. Thomas Brown is retired. Bryce Ford will be on a new bike. Um, there's a bunch of young guys who think that they should be up in the mix. So 2021 should be, uh, should be a crazy year. Um, you've kind of touched on storylines, wanting to expose some of those topics and stuff like that. So, uh, what, are some of the expectations you may have, or more specifically, what storylines are you most intrigued by heading into the new year? Um, Storylines heading into the new year, obviously are Chad just trying to step up his game. Um, I was super uh, interested in filming with Linkwist because obviously coming off of an insane pro-am year going pro, um, there's a lot of hype around that. Uh, I want to shoot the Fords because obviously they're making a big switch. Mm -hmm. um and joel and jeffrey obviously um as far as that i think that's all i have heading into at least round one and i can't even predict the storylines because it's all gonna happen in real time like round one something's gonna happen whether riders do good whether riders do Mm -hmm. bad whether the yamahas work out like the story is gonna play and that's gonna completely change how my videos how everything that i'm creating turns out because it's all relevant to what happens at the first few races. Agreed. I mean, obviously those are the big storylines. Um, I think, th- and you're right. I mean, things are going to happen. Uh, so for like Supercross fans, there's so many things that are kind of similar in a way that, I mean, obviously you have Chad and Joel, um, Bryce, who's now going to, those three guys are going to think that, you know, they should be on the podium, obviously every single time based on what they've done. But then where it gets interesting is the other guys, Brandon Hogue thinks he should be on the podium. Every time Alan Myers has been on the podium, you're going to look at guys that are, you know, looking to take that next leap. There's going to be guys that think they should be on the podium every race that aren't going to be in the top five. That's where it gets exciting. That's where you should see some awesome battles. And uh, that that's what gets me going. I, I truly believe you're probably looking at the most stacked class we've seen in, 
man, in a very long time. I know, I think we said that probably last year, but you're seeing new guys coming in, guys like Max who are going to make a major impact. And then some of those guys last year that came in as rookies are going to make a major impact because now they've had that year of growth. Um, I, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but it's sure to be exciting. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm really excited for it. Um, so here at digging deep, we're looking, you know, we're working on something behind the scenes, uh, something major, something that will make the, the 2021 season so much more fun and enjoyable. So it's cool that you're, you know, kind of working on something bigger. So are we of totally different types? Um, but we're working on something bigger too. Um, and I look forward, uh, to announcing that very soon, like within the probably next week after this, um, this episode comes out. But with that, you know, we've, I've gotten info, I'm getting info behind the scenes uh, of from racers from the series from stuff like that for what we're building. Um, and the number I'm told is 26. As of right now, there are 26 potential riders planning to line up at Daytona. Um, so not only is that an incredibly strong number, but when you break it down to each tier, uh, kind of like we just touched on, but each tier should prompt some pretty remarkable battles, you know, like we talked about, I mean, there's the Chad versus Joel battle for the thousandth time. Um, can Bryce dice it up with those guys? Like at the end of last season, then, you know, Janusa and Alan Myers, Hogue, Restrelli, Wolf. I mean, that's a never ending brawl. I feel like, um, you know, where is rookie Max Link was going to stack up just like we talked about. I mean, he's, that's going to be another guy who's going to be right in the mix. I, I really feel like if you would have plugged him in at the end of last season, he could have fought for that fifth, sixth spot. I really believe that after how dominant he was in pro-am, like we talked about, you know, there's all these young guys coming in, which I'll admit is a way bigger number than I expected or realized. There's a lot of guys on that list um, that are new entries to the pro class, which is exciting because those guys are all going to battle for supremacy as the top guy, or, or, you know, if Max is a step ahead of them, which, you know, that could really be a thing, then you want to be the next guy in line. Um, so, I mean, again, I think 20, 2021 should be amazing and as we talk about it like this it just gets me going yeah no i completely agree and one thing we didn't even touch on yet is all the amateurs moving up like Jaden launderville had an insane season aaron salinas won three national championships this is moving to pro-am like there's so much potential not even just in the pro ranks but in pro-am and all the amateur ranks coming in 2021 exactly i mean i don't know when you start to go down that road uh that's that's when you're gonna make people angry right like there's so yeah. many people that need to be touched on there's so many um guys moving up and, and yes like dominant guys in the younger classes like Jaden Launderville moving up. Then there's uh, riders moving up from kind of maybe the amateur classes or whatever, moving up to the top tier amateur classes that are going to be exciting. And we saw riders, you know, kind of make that one to two year switch right to the pro class. So we got to start looking at those guys now because in a year or two, they're going to want to go pro and dice it up with these other, uh, other young guys in the pro class. And, uh, and, and that's exciting. Um, we, t we, you mentioned Michael Allred, you mentioned that, uh, he's a guy that you filmed with a little bit, um, kind of touched base with him again. Like I said, we got him coming up on the show here. Um, so give me a little sense before we talk to, to him, uh, where do you think he's at heading into his first full season as a pro, whether mentally physically, physically, where's he at and, and kind of uh, give us maybe some expectations for him. I mean, he looked good on the track considering he was on a stock clapped out Yamaha. I mean, he was <laughs> putting in good motos um, from okay. just what I heard talking to him. Like he's been putting in work in the gym. He's been doing everything, everything he can to, you know, get better and get ready for 2021. I think he's coming into it, just hoping and doing everything he can to get in top 10. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, obviously in a class like this top 10 is going to be, is going to be gnarly. Um, if they go by the structure that they've had, uh, in seasons past, you know, uh, at Daytona, it's going to be gnarly just to make the show. Uh, so I feel like that's cool because I, whatever it was the first year we raced on there, the second year, man, I remember being scared to death that I wasn't going to make the main. Cause there was like 10 guys that didn't make it or whatever. So, uh, I feel like, I feel like that's where our sport needs to be. So it's cool that, um, there's so many people lining up. It's a grind, but Mike is a mature seasoned rider that this is the same thing. I'm going to tell him right to his face when we get him on here in a little bit. Um, I think he'll be fine because he's going to use that maturity because he's going to use 
use all that experience to his uh, to his advantage. Um, I think that maybe just puts him a step uh, above, at least in the consistency kind of realm, over some of those younger kids because there are very young kids that are going to be making this transition too. So um, you know, I'm excited to talk to Mike and hear uh, kind of where his mind that mind is at coming up on the show. But I, I think he'll be really good, like you said. Um, but before we go, pal, I know you're working on something pretty major. Uh, we kind of referenced that. Um, is that something that we can, we can, uh, expect, what is your plan to roll that out? Is it going to be like a series, like kind of round by round week by week? Um, I don't want to overstep. I don't want to ask too much, but tell us any more insight you can into this project that you're working on, maybe exposing some of the, the behind the scenes stuff that, uh, that we enjoy so much. Yeah. So we'll all see. I mean, I already know I probably have a full week of editing to do on just the first episode <laughs> with Chad and Max. Okay. There's so much footage that I already shot today and with Chad's interview. So, and then digging into your audio and trying to build like more of a storyline around it. So it's definitely going to be a big project per episode. So um, my goal is to get, obviously just to film as much as I can down here and not try mm -hmm. to take on too much where I'm trying to edit and shoot because I'm already shooting all day. There's really no time to review all the footage and start putting it together. Mm -hmm. um, the goal is to get one, pro hopefully two episodes out before Daytona and then go from there, whether it's um, an episode around, maybe an episode every two rounds, whatever it is, whatever the stories are, you know, um, yep. we'll see. The, I, I really don't know how much workload it's actually going to be. I just know it's a lot more than anything I've taken on yet. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know. I know. I, I feel that pain. Uh, I do like though, like even with the Moto Spy stuff, like I feel like I like when, you know, it might be, you might be a round or two rounds or three rounds in, and they're still exposing like some of the preseason stuff, because then it's kind of showing what went into, or, or the laying of the foundation to where they are at round one, two, or three. So, um, I like that. Like, I like, you know, it can kind of be behind because it shows why they are where they are. Like the footage you're recording now, then at round one, two, three or whatever, we're going to see the results and you're going to be able to expose the backstory to that. So I, I like, I feel like, feel like that's a, that's a perfect formula, a perfect uh, kind of plan to have. I, I literally can't wait. Yeah. That, I mean, that's the goal Moto spy. That's my favorite thing to watch on the internet, but obviously I need to <laughs> understand that they have 20 plus media guys and full mm -hmm. audio crews and, whole red bull media house producing those videos so like obviously just me i can't do that quality but that's the goal and that's the dream to build a story like that right well obviously anything we can do to help you know on the audio side uh happy to um i also think it, it probably helps too right that like all the riders want to be a part of it you know all the riders want to help this girl want to help you want to be featured want to be covered so um you do have that like working uh to your advantage i feel like yeah i mean the ATV motocross is such a tight knit community that, I mean, I can text anyone I really want to, and hopefully right. I'll get a response. There are actually a few riders who I <laughs> haven't gotten in contact with yet, but I mean, we'll see as the series goes on. Yeah. 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 Well, that's awesome. I'm uh, again, uh, couldn't be more excited for it. And uh, yeah, I just can't thank you enough for joining me here. This was super fun. This is something we're going to have to do more. And as these um, episodes, as these, as the stuff kind of comes to, we need to get you back on to talk about it, talk about all the work, talk about how cool, it is to put it together and uh again anything that we can do to help um obviously it's just an honor to be uh to be a very small part of it yeah i really appreciate it cody yeah well with just uh with just over a month um uh, before the first gate drop i just thought it would be fun to uh kind of get together here to kick off the episode do a little bench racing with you and um i know it's gonna fly by with all the work that you're doing but the season's gonna be here before we know it so um yeah i just can't thank you enough especially on short notice getting you on here and i uh, appreciate everything you do so much i appreciate everything you do too yeah. Thanks so much, pal. Can't wait. Uh, can't wait for the season. That's Logan Tremellen from Tremellen Media House. Check him out on Instagram, Facebook, all the places where you can find them. Brought to you by Factory 43. Check out their Nerf bars, bumpers, grab bars, and more at factory43atv.com. Thanks again. See you soon. Welcome to the team, two-time champ Joel Hetrick, who dropped the biggest news of the offseason when he announced his move to CST Tires. 
The CST takeover has been gaining momentum over the past several seasons, and now Joel Hetrick and his Phoenix Racing teammate Jeffrey Rastrelli are the most recent additions. The Pulse MXR tire has helped lead riders like Thomas Brown to race wins in three consecutive Quad Cross of Nations titles, Nick Janusa to the Pro Class podium, myself Cody Jansen as I rode my Pulse MXR fronts and white label soft comp on rears, to back-to-back -back national championships in the Junior 25 Plus class, and the most recent additions have us thinking a Pro Class national championship is on the horizon for CST tires. The Pulse MXR tire, available in soft and standard compounds, offers the highest level of traction, most predictable cornering, and superior wear characteristics when compared to the competition. Visit shop.csttires.com to join the CST takeover today, or prepare to be beat by someone who did. Joel Hattrick, Jeffrey Rastrelli, Nick Janusa, myself, and so many others are believers in CST tires. Are you? CST Tires, where passion meets the ground. You already know we're Team Blue Crew here at the Digging Deep ATV MX Podcast. Whether it's second all-time winningest, seven-time and reigning ATV MX Pro Class National Champion Chad Wienan, or six-time and current XC1 Pro ATV GNCC National Champion Walker Fowler, it's clear the podium-proven Yamaha YFC 450R is the winning choice of sport ATVs. This unprecedented success for the YFC 450R, its unrivaled quality and performance, and the undeniable fact that Yamaha is the leading OEM supporter of ATV racing has created a Yamaha takeover within the sport quad market. Better yet, Yamaha's Blue Crew Racer Support Program is back and even stronger for 2021, meaning Yamaha riders are about to cash in on higher payouts and more prize opportunities, including a chance to win a brand new YFZ 450R. For more info, head over to YamahaBlueCrew.com, follow them on social media at Yamaha Outdoors, and check out Yamaha's full proven off-road lineup at YamahaOutdoors.com today. For over 150 years, Valvoline has led the charge by being dedicated to constant improvement and innovation across all disciplines of racing. Valvoline has sponsored some of the greatest names in motorsports, and for the better part of a decade, I've been fortunate enough to be part of the historically great Team Valvoline. From my commuting vehicles to small engines, race quads, and everything in between, I trust nothing but Valvoline in all of my equipment. I've experienced increased function and durability as well as a longer life expectancy thanks to Valvoline's array of products and lubricants. Since 1866, Valvoline has been focused on bettering your experience, whether on road, on track, and everywhere in between. Upgrade to Valvoline today and check them out at Valvoline.com. SSI decals is a name synonymous with ATV racing, synonymous with big time success, and absolutely synonymous with the best looking decals around. An offshoot of their parent company that was established in 1947, SSI first took shape from owner Ian Harris's passion for ATVs. With what started as just making numbers and decals for riders like Chad Wienan, the company quickly took off. And today, you couldn't imagine ATV motocross without SSI decals. The graphics maker and designer now supports all the top teams in ATV motocross, as well as teams and riders racing GNCC, Work Series, Pro Motocross and Supercross, Canadian Pro Motocross, Short Course Off-Road Trucks, UTVs, Snowcross, and oh yeah, six-time NHRA World Champion Clay Milliken. No project is too big or too small for SSI decals, making your identity stick with championship level graphics. Head over to SSIDecals.com today and then maybe call the doctor because things are about to get sick. All right, guys, this next guest is on the brink of a breakout season, which is saying something because year one and year two were pretty incredible in their own right. He's a guy we're always cheering for here at Digging Deep, brought to you by Bike Strikes and Quads, LLC. Use code ATVMX at btqllc.com. It's 2018 Pro-Am National Champion, 2019 AMA ATV Pro Rookie of the Year, Mr. Brandon Hogue. What's up, mate? Thanks for joining us once again. What's up, mate? Thanks. Dang, dude. I don't know if I deserve all that nice intro like that, but uh, nice to nice to be back on here. Yeah, well, uh, when you accomplish those things, you surely deserve uh, surely deserve those accolades. So um, stoked to have you on once again. You're one of the guys that we obviously love talking to. Uh, you're a guy that so many people cheer for, obviously. And then um, I've said it every time I think we've had you on, you know, with with your and I kind of uh, friendship and, uh, you know, connection in the past. It's always awesome to have you on. And still to this day, I mean, your, your story of success is one of my very favorite ones. I mean, uh, you just, uh, you were never going to, uh, you know, get told no 
know, and you were going to make it no matter what. So, um, you know, it's awesome to have you on the show and to, to kind of expose that story and, uh, you know, and talk to you once again. So, um, yeah, again, we're stoked to have you on and, uh, you know, I hit you up a while back to check in, but give our listeners an update on how you're doing, because the last time we saw you, you suffered a pretty gnarly get off at Lake Sugar Tree. Yeah. Uh, so right now I'm feeling already back to like 100%. Uh, I have no pain in my wrist or my scaphoid, I think is actually what, what I broke, but I have no pains when I ride or anything like that. Um, like early on I did, but, uh, just, you know, over time, obviously it got better and now I'm all good. Um, but I've, I've been riding now. Uh, I went to Florida. Sorry, my dog's kind of being weird. Uh, I went to Florida. (laughs) Um, and then I had some pain there, but after like the first week I was golden and, uh, yeah, I've been trying to hammer away ever since. Okay. Well, so what happened? I mean, what happened there? Because it, it, did you just uh, clip your rear tires wrong and throw you a little goofy or, or what happened there? Cause it's something that uh, kind of wanted to get you on right away there and talk about it, but it's also um, kind of wanted to give you a little time to uh, you know, recover at the same, th- at the same time. Yeah. So honestly, what I, this is what I think happened. Obviously I don't really know, but so I know that my shifter bent okay. and I know I was in like, um, I was in too high of a gear. Like I, I had to be in fourth gear for the majority of the track. And then oh, your shifter bent prior to this. Yes. It bent oh. like on lap. It went like seriously lap two, I think, or okay. lap two. Um, it actually happened. I know where it happened too. It was, um, it's kind of a hard to explain corner, but it was deep ruts. Like my bike was pretty much bottoming. Okay. And I think my, my shifter just caught the inside of the rut and then, bent it towards me so i could not wedge my toe under it to shift um so like i was stuck and at that point in time i think i was in third gear so i was stuck in third and i was like getting in spots to where i would have to rev it out and that's you know like it was bad news i I really didn't know what to do so and and the jumps there too are pretty hard to like reach down and just pull a shift (laughs) right so what i would my plan was was race or yeah race the whole track in third and then when i get to the table by the pond like the big table um i would shift fourth and then i would run fourth the whole rest of the track until like after the finish line uh there's that triple into the corner okay so yeah i would keep it in fourth and just clutch the heck out of it and then i mean i watched the video of like me wrecking there and i was in fourth gear feather in the clutch on on the exit and like going too fast. And then I also jumped too far back, but that's what I think happened is I was wrong gear going too fast. And then I don't know why I went so far back. I don't really know how to explain that other than just a mistake, but Okay. Well, I'm so glad I asked though, because when you're, I mean, in higher of a gear than you'd want to be in and your tires are spinning at a totally different rotation than you'd want them to be in all those things. Uh, that Mm -hmm. makes a little more sense in a section like that, that was more technical than it looked. I feel like, um, yeah. So that makes total sense that you had something going on. I mean, at least, uh, you know, because sitting there as a spectator, it looked, I'm like, how did that happen? Like he's done, you know, he's, he's done little sections like this, you know, obviously today perfectly all, all day or whatever, but then, you know, you've done hundreds and hundreds of laps doing little stuff like this. So I was so surprised, but that makes so much sense. So I'm glad I asked. Yeah, dude. Like in in that section too, actually in qualifying, Mm -hmm. I felt like it was one of my stronger places because I would just hit it wide open and okay. like, like I felt comfortable somehow holding it wide open through that little weird, it was like a, almost like a double, double, but not really, you know? And then that's why I know I was in that, that high gear. And I think I just over, you know, came in too hot. Cause I almost like double, doubled it. I almost cleared it if my rears wouldn't have clipped. Right. But yeah, that's, that's kind of what happened. Okay. Well, uh, you know, that's all behind you now. So we can move on to positive things. You're back to hundred percent. You're ready to rip. You got no pain. So, uh, where are you, where are you at right now? Because I was thinking you were at Deckers, right? You were at Deckers at one point Then I saw you with the Ford brothers crew. So, uh, where are we now and how is uh prep going for 2021? Yeah. So I went to Deckers in December, I think, and just to 
get back on the bike and like kind of break the rust off uh, and then get some fitness. And then I came to the Fords. That's where I am right now. I am at the Ford compound in Texas. Uh, awesome. I've been here for, I think, I think it's been like three weeks or so. Um, okay. But I, I'm in a super great place right now. Like this facility and the family and everything uh, like I've never experienced before. So I'm, I'm so pumped to be here. Um, and you know, like the tracks are, are really nice. Um, we've been getting a lot of quality riding in the weather's pretty good too. Um, like it's been, I seriously have one, you know, like, I don't know, I have nothing bad about being here in Texas. Like it's perfect. That's awesome to have a, a facility like that, that looks like it's impeccable at your, you know, at kind of at your fingertips at your, uh, at your, uh, you know, at, at however you want to say it, but it's there for you. You can use it all the time. You're ready to rip. And then, um, you know, to have other pro riders like that at, uh, you know, at a, at a top level like that, I feel like is invaluable to be able to ride with. Right. And I mean, the fact that they, they were willing to have me come out too. like, I understand the whole, um, you know, like we're all competitors to a point. So the fact that they were willing to do that and have me here, uh, means a lot too. Um, yep. and yeah, like you just said, it's, it's great to ride with other people and, uh, push each other on and off the track and just get along. Like we're all getting along super good and mm -hmm. they're, uh, like their personalities, I feel like are awesome and kind of go with me and it, it's, it's just been great. Well, I feel like uh, Fords too, the whole family, I feel like they're not the kind of people that, um, you know, are, are going to shell away from competition or whatever. I feel like they're more like, Hey, you know, if Brandon's here, that's just going to make us that much better, you know? So I feel like, and then, and then obviously you can use that as your advantage to, you know, el everybody's elevating their game. I feel like, and I feel like um, they're that way. And I feel like the sport in general, I don't know if it comes from the two wheel side with the, with the clubs and the Alden bakers and whatever, but I feel like that's just becoming more of a trendy thing for everybody to get together and uh, you know, kind of better themselves in the off season or off weeks or whatever. Um, I feel like that's just becoming more of the norm. Right. And, and another thing, like, man, I think it's a lot funner than just being alone or, or kind of doing your own thing. Like, that's what I've done in the past and uh, at least in the off season. And it's great. Like, I really do like being alone and, and that whole aspect. But there comes a point to where you got to have fun with it, too. And, like, this brings brings fun to me. And, um, you know, it's cool to be able to, to do that. Yeah. I like to hear it. How's, uh, so how's your program looking? We're still, um, with Timmy D doing the TDR thing, riding Hondas. Are, are we, uh, are we running this thing back basically because, because it seemed like you guys had a pretty good thing going. Yeah, dude. Uh, actually, so still with Timmy D, uh, TDR and honestly, everything stayed the same because I felt like the only thing that needed to get better was me. Uh, the shocks, every component, everything's been the same. So I'm staying on Honda and it's just all up to me. Awesome. Well, I, I think that that's a, that's a good thing too, because there's a lot of people that um, maybe are changing up their program or whatever. And there's, there's growing pains that can come with that too. It's not always the, the easiest to transition a, a um, you know, your program or whatever like that. So I feel like that's a, that's a, you know, a good thing for you. Um, again, you were in a good place. You showed your capability and everything last year. So um, I feel like, you know, and I feel like year three so often, uh, not even just in this sport, but so often year three is a year where people take a leap. So I feel like you're primed and ready to go to, uh, you know, kind of take a leap here in year three. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people saying that you're going to be one of the only Hondas out there. Um, so I feel like you got to hold it down for the red, uh, hold it down for the red team, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I think that's pretty cool. Like, hopefully I gained some, some fans just from being on a Honda or something, but yeah, right. Yeah. I like to be, I mean, I actually do really like being that the odd guy, I guess now. Isn't it uh, weird. Isn't it weird how fast things change? It's definitely going to feel. Yeah, dude, it's going to be so weird because I feel like it, it was Honda heavy and now it's now like I'll be one of the only ones, which is, right. it's just crazy. That's what they say. Yeah. It will be crazy. But I've been seeing a I lot of those to... comments. Go ahead. Yeah, and 
I, you know, I've heard a lot about how, you know, like kind of with Joel and everything, like the switch is definitely great for people. And I think the Yamaha is like a super solid bike. I've seen with these guys kind of switching over, like I've seen a lot from the outside, but just for me, like, I think a Honda also fits my riding style. I've rode a couple Yamahas and I just feel like seeing in the past, I don't know, the Hondas turn for me and they, they, they're just my bike. I, I don't really know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I like that again. I think it's, uh, I think as everybody else is switching and changing everything over so many people are a large percentage, uh, probably as big of a percentage as we've seen in 15 years. Um, you know, for everything staying the same for you, I just, I feel like that's, uh, in, uh, something that you can use as an advantage for you. So no real changes, uh, to your program other than the new pup, the new pup is a change for 2021. Yeah. Yeah. I did actually get a new puppy. I had to have a friend, uh, especially like when I went to Florida, right. I just felt like having a friend or something to take my mind off of just being alone is, is a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. I like it. I like it. I, I honestly, I felt like I knew exactly why, uh, why you did it when, um, when I saw it. So I feel like that's, uh, that's cool. Just more creating more of a Zen for your, uh, for your, uh, you know, life, your racing, whatever. Um, so last year you came out on fire at Daytona, right? Uh, right near the top of the board and qualifying, you won your heat race and you still believe you could have and should have won that main event with a better start. So tell me how you replicate that unforgettable day. Once again, just over a month from now. Well, yeah, I was talking to my brother today about Daytona actually, I mean, I, I felt like the track suited me too. Uh, I really do like supercross style tracks. And then the very first qualifier, I, I just felt great right one of the good days. Um, but yeah, dude, it was just the weirdest thing. Like I was in, I was in this zone the entire day to where like people would talk to me and stuff and like I, some stuff I didn't even listen to. I just was in a almost like a tunnel vision, you know, like you hear a lot of people talk about, mm-hmm. I swear I was in something like that. And I mean, like on the whole shots, right? Like for the heat, um, I had a good gate pick, like second or something, but that gate, like when that gate barely flinched, uh, you know, I was jumping. It was one of the days where everything was on. Uh, and I mean, I'm not going to say I would have done better in the main event, but I just wish I really wouldn't have did what I did in that start. Um, and yeah, hopefully this Daytona um, goes like that and I can learn from my last year mistake because I do I do really want to start off on a good note um, and carry like momentum into to round two. Um, but yeah, Daytona last year, man, was like, I don't know what it was, but it was a good good day for me. That's awesome. And it's got to be, um, you know, I'm assuming as you ha- head into that place, uh, you know, I, I know that maybe it didn't end the way you wanted it to, but Daytona as a whole was a major positive. So when you head back into there, um, I'm assuming you're going to kind of head into there with a little bit of momentum left over from last year, I would assume. Yeah, I hope so. And I hope, uh, I hope the track's nice and racy and we just can execute really good starts and um, I feel like that's a big piece to Daytona is starting with those guys. Like if I can to start up there and at least be on their wheel on uh, the first couple laps and see what we can do from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. Uh, I, you know, it's right around the corner. So it's, uh, it's getting to be that exciting time of year, mm-hmm. um, through, through the first handful of races in 2020, you were a top five staple, right? Um, I don't see things going any differently this season. Uh, if anything, I feel like, you know, they're even going to be more positive. Um, you did hit a little bit of a lull though, prior to that injury, I feel like, um, you know, you were on your way to rebounding, from, you know, that little bit of a lull, there was two sevenths there. Um, I think you were going to rebound, you were going to rebound from it in Virginia. Um, you know, when you got hurt, but you know, I feel like that was your kind of racetrack I feel like, but, uh, so where I guess I'm going with this, um, my question is, did you learn anything from those two rounds of being outside the top five that you can use as, you know, knowledge, um, 
so it doesn't happen again this season because in such a stacked class with the goals that you have, you know, every single one of those points is going to be valuable. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a really good point. I mean, it was pretty noticeable that about halfway through the year, like I, it looked like I started to go backwards and I de definitely did um, the underlying issue behind it. And I did learn a lot. And um, I also learned that, you know, like the, the start of the race, if you, you start to get freight train, like someone passes you and then another guy passes you like that is, it really could out of momentum in the race. Uh, like Pleasure Valley, I had a pretty decent start and, and I got freight trained and like, it kind of set me like, oh crap, these guys are, these guys are like really going fast. And I said I choose leading into the race uh, with my program that unfortunately, I don't know what else I could have changed. I just had a really bad bad practicing like um, I would go to the track and I couldn't get a, a day of riding in um, I was with Hetrick I stayed at, at Hetrick's for the whole year but I seriously had a, about a solid month to where I couldn't get a good day of riding and I do feel like that um, that definitely put me backwards um, and th there was just nothing like it was it was a mix of bad luck and not having, not having the, the funds but this year, I plan to really make the days count in the in the practice. So, leading up to the race, I need to have really good quality. Uh, make sure I get motos in, sprints in. Just make sure that I'm ready to go race. Because last year, halfway through, I felt like I'd show up at these races, and and honestly, I'm not ready like everybody else. Okay. Well, uh, I love your outlook. Um, you know, I feel like it's all positivity at this point. And again, I feel like you go through those things and you're able to, to learn from them. That's the only reason why I asked, it wasn't bringing up a sore subject. Uh, it was more, you know, you go through those things you learn. And again, I feel like those are the things that you learn in year one and year two. And that's why so many athletes take a giant jump in year three. So I feel like that's where we're at. That's why I wanted to, you know, kind of ask that question. And, and so, uh, to be able to give listeners, um, you you know, kind of a glimpse into what you expect to build on, improve on, and be better uh, for year three. So again, I love your outlook, uh, the positivity, um, you know, the the fact that you go through something and you're able to not just, uh, you know, oh, shucks, you know, sucks that I had to go through that. It's more figuring out, you know, why it happened, what can we do to make it better so that it doesn't happen again. So I love that. Love that about, uh, you know, your mindset. Um, yeah. Again, like I said before, at the, at the mm -hmm. start of this thing, you're just one of those guys that you're always going to fight until the bitter end. And I love that. I mean, you brought up pleasure Valley and uh, you know, I remember watching you and Wesley just like, like going at it, like it was the gnarly, it might've been one of the gnarliest battles I ever saw. And that's why I, I posted something about it last night as my mind went there. It's like, again, you're just so mentally tough that, um, you know, you're going to fight until, you know, to and through the, the checkered flag. And I feel like that's why you're a guy that's so hard to bet against. Well, I mean, I really appreciate you saying that. I, I just, yeah, I really don't, I don't believe in giving up whether I'm 10th place or whether I'm doing really good. I just, and last year I felt like I actually did. Like I felt like I did give up and, uh, and then getting hurt too. Right. So me and Bryce were in a really, I mean, we were tied in points going into Virginia and like once I saw it was actually your post. Uh, me and Joel were together when this happened, but your post came up about me and Bryce tied in points. And like when I saw that post, I had already trained, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to train again. <laughs> like I, I, that's that kind of stuff right there was was really motivating. But when I when I got hurt too, you know, a week after, I was the worst I've been. I mean, probably in my life. Like I. I hit a really low point because I didn't think I was going to actually race anymore. Um, and it just, it made me realize that this, this isn't going to be, you know, like, I don't know how long I could be racing and I need to, while I'm doing it, my whole life needs to be racing. And that's kind of what changed this year is like, 
I, I'm going to eat, sleep and breathe this stuff because I don't know if, if next year's a promise, you know, like I, I have to, I really do have to give it a hundred percent. I mean, wake up and racing is, is my whole day, you know? Yeah. Well, that's a scary thought, uh, a scary thing for everybody else to hear Brandon, because for as long as I've known you, you've eat, sleep and breathe this thing. So if you're taking it to another level, uh, we should have big expectations. Well, I, I, I mean, I hope to be, uh, you know, I don't want to talk. I don't like to do a lot of talking, I know, but I know that's why I'm trying I wasn't to have better fitness. I wasn't, I'm trying to, I wasn't even going to ask. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'd rather let my riding do the talking than, than me tell you, I'm going to go out and whoop everybody. But I, I do want to be a better me. I do want to have uh, better fitness, better skills on the bike, better sprint speed, better consistency. I just, there's so many things I need to get better at, but that's why I love this stuff, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love it too. I, I know that, uh, you enjoy the grind and I feel like that's just a recipe for success. You know, um, like I kind of said, you've grabbed, uh, you know, I guess I maybe didn't mention it yet, but you've grabbed, um, you know, one podium in each of your first two years, but this year is different because, uh, Thomas's top three spot is up for grabs and someone's going to claim it. Um, I know we don't want to talk about goals and results and stuff like that. Um, I know in your mind you have, you know, bigger, bigger goals than, you know, just being, uh, you know, a top three guy. Um, but I will say that I can't wait to see how it plays out because, uh, just like you talked about with you and Bryce, that battle between you and Bryce at the end of last season was when you got hurt, like literally we were prompting it right before you got hurt. That was the battle I was most excited for, even though we had, you know, a gnarly battle at the front of the pack too. Uh, so again, I just, um, I think your riding will do the talking. I think you're primed for a big year and I just can't wait to see it. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. I, I hope to, I see all the hype about that third place spot i mean uh hope to be one of those guys i'm not gonna say i'm gonna be but let's just i think let's get racing and see what happens yeah well it's almost time to go so i'm um, so stoked to talk talk to you obviously I, again i love uh seeing a glimpse into your mindset seeing a, a glimpse into what motivates you what's ma makes you tick um so again i can't thank you enough for jumping back on here with us we're always pulling for you and uh yeah like i said we're gonna be racing before we know it so um just wishing you all the best buddy just uh make sure you stay safe heading up to daytona and um again we're always pulling for you here so we can't wait to see how it all goes down yeah, I appreciate that a lot. I mean, it, it means the world and uh, everyone that supports me and roots for me on the track. I mean, it makes me jump out of bed. So I, I really appreciate it. And thanks for having me on too. It, it, it means the world. Man. Yeah, you're the man, pal. That's uh, that's former Pro-Am champ and Pro Rookie of the Year, Brandon Hogue, brought to you by Bike Strikes and Quads, LLC. Use discount code ATVMX at btqllc.com. Thanks again, buddy. Stay safe and we'll see you soon. Thank you, Cody. See you, pal. We are proud to be partnered with Numira Technologies. Since 2001, Numira has led the charge in the ATV and side-by-side -side market, covering more applications than anyone else in the industry. Numira's advanced piston technology uses a NASA-exclusive aluminum alloy that helps to reduce expansion rates, that allows for tighter tolerances, and leads to higher overall engine performance for your machine. For more information about Numira's wide offerings of pistons, rings, gaskets, and industry-leading top-end repair kits, Visit your local dealer or online at www.numira.com. Numira Technologies, pistons with an attitude. We are pleased to be partnered with Bronco ATV and UTV components. Bronco has been an industry leader in replacement hard parts and accessories for all makes and models for over 15 years. With a catalog that includes a full line of electrical components, engine internals like rods and cylinders, all the way down to suspension parts and bearing kits. Bronco is your hard part source for whatever you need for whatever you ride. Available exclusively through distributors around the world. Visit your local dealer or online at broncoatv.com. Forworks Carbon's innovative lightweight products include top-notch seat covers, carbon fiber, and plastic hoods, gas tank covers, exhaust shields, shock guards, and much more. Whether you have an ATV, UTV, or snowmobile, Forworks has the goodies that will improve your ride and make you salivate. We trust Forworks for increased function and a sexier look, and you should too. Forworks Carbon, always working hard to bring high quality and innovative parts to the market. Check them out today at fwcarbon.com.
All right, guys, this is the guest you've probably all been waiting for. He's the headline act and a fan favorite. So, so many of us are stoked that he's coming back for at least one more season. Brought to you by Manscaped and the Lawnmower 3.0 electric trimmer. Go to manscaped.com to get 20% off plus free shipping by using code DIGGINGDEEP20 at checkout. It's the man himself, Mr. Jeffrey Rastrelli. What's up, pal? Stoked to get you back on Digging Deep. Uh, yeah, man, I'm glad to be here and uh, glad to have, glad glad you're having me on the show and uh, it's always a good deal. We always have fun and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I mean, you're uh, you're obviously a favorite guest of mine, but I think everybody everybody perks up when we get you on this thing. So uh, on the last episode, Joel told us that uh, he had just kind of arrived down there by you guys. So um, how have the last few weeks been with the Hetrick family living in your backyard, literally? Uh, it's actually the front yard, but okay. All right. <laughs> no, it's uh. It's all good, man. It's been great. Uh, it's been uh, really good uh, to have him down here, and we've been training uh, a buttload. And um, I probably rode more this year. Well, even asking ask Joel, uh, we rode so almost too much. I feel like it's like it's crazy. The weather's been awesome. Everything's been really good, and we've been training hard and uh, training together, and, and obviously riding together. And um, everything's been going really well. It's uh, really feeding off each other, and it's good, man. It's it's uh, and it's cool that we're teammates on top of it, and good friends, and we can go and do this and. We have one goal together and, uh, you know, kind of tackle it together. So it's good. It's so cool. I mean, when I think about, you know, 10, 15 years ago when we were all kids and it was like, you know, you were such good buddies back then, I feel like. So to think about how far it's come and now to have you guys be like at the pinnacle of the sport. And now you're, I mean, to be teammates like you are, um, and such a, you know, and it's even like maybe the team is more tight knit than it's ever been before. So for you guys to be the riders, that's gotta be a pretty special feeling. It is, man. It really is. And, you know, of course, Joel, Joel might've had something to do with it. He always has some good, you know, good things to say about me, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. never negative, you know, and um, I think I've done the best with what I've been dealt with in my career. So uh, he knows I work hard. He knows I try my best. And I think, uh, you know, David other at, at Phoenix knows the same thing. So mm -hmm. um, after the, you know, the rough year we had last year, he could, uh, he called me up and said, you know, I, I think we, we give you another go. And, um, we're going to, you know, we're going to switch the Yamaha and this is what's going to go. And this is how it's going to happen. And uh, I was all on board, you know, I've uh, of course been on that Honda for a long time myself and it's been um, very, very good to me, but it's um, never bad to change. And as of right now, it's, it's going well, it's going really well. So um, to, to, uh, you know, have that, you know, have, have that to look forward to, you know, to go ride something new every day and to yeah. uh, feel some new power and new handling and new things. It's, it's exciting to go every day and go ride. And I think that's more or less why we've been riding so much because it's been fun. And I have a stalker and Joel has a stalker too. So we've been just shredding those things if we're not on the race bike. So yeah, that's, it's, uh, that's cool. Great that's time. Cool. Yeah. yeah. It's been cool. It's just it, both of us, the same stuff, you know, it's whether it's on the, on the big motor or we're on the stalkers, we just go out and rip and have fun. And, um, and we do our job, you know, and go home each day and it's, it's been good. I have to believe that that creates an advantage for you too. You know, when, uh, when you have two guys like you guys, you know, two of the fastest dudes on the planet being able to ride with each other. Um, I can't imagine the kind of advantage that that creates for the both of you. Yeah, that, that for sure. And also, you know, with, uh, with this new bike, you know, helping with setup and, and different things like that, feeling things that he feels and what he feels that I don't feel and, and kind of, you know, talking to each other and brainstorming it off the track and, maybe I can help him. He can help me with, with that kind of thing because he has a little more time on the bike than me as well. So I think he's helped me more than I have. I've helped him, but um, you know, he had, he had a, a certain test day and stuff like that, that I wasn't fortunate enough to get yet. So, um, you know, he has a little bit of step ahead and he kind of correlated things to me to help, to help the situation. So sure. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been good. And he actually helped me a lot this week in that Yamaha's Yamaha's getting dialed, man. I, I can't say enough about it. So that's awesome. I mean, that was the biggest news of the off season. I think for, for, for me, um, you know, that your team Phoenix racing was making the switch to the Yamaha YFC 450 R and as well as, you know, going to CST tires for 2021. I think that that's another big thing. Um, so you have some time with that combo, you have some time on the bike. So, um, how has the, the transition been so far? You touched on a little bit, you know, I do believe that change is rejuvenating. I feel like change is exciting. I feel like that can kind of breathe a breath of uh, life into like, you know, maybe a team or whatever. Um, yep. But tell me, tell me how it's been so far. I mean, what were your first kind of reactions to getting on that bike? I know you, like you said, you were on the Honda for forever. It felt like it wasn't 
really that long, I guess that you would have been on a can am or whatever, but I mean, you yeah. felt like you'd been on a Honda for a while. So talk me through, uh, when you first got on the Yamaha and then, um, you know, kind of all the improvements since then. Um, you know, it's, it was weird at first, of course, getting on any new machine, just sitting on it feels weird, you know, going on the track the first week, like it was going crazy because the bike had so much power. I didn't even know what to do with it, <laughs> to be honest. So I was like, I kind of, I burnt the set of clutches up. Like I was like, man, uh, I asked Chad, I was like, Hey, you burn clutches up in these things. He's like, no, but I could see how you would. And I was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> maybe so. <laughs> so, um, but it was just like a lot of power, man. And it's like, it, you can almost, I've never thought I could tell you, say, you know, we might have too much, but as of right now, it's, it's a freaking ripper, man. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I can't hang on to the thing hardly. So, um, that's the big plus side, but now it's just more or less, um, just getting, getting down with the, the front end and stuff like that. And different setups that the Honda, you wanted to be this and, and you set it up the Yamaha like that. And it just doesn't really work the same. So mm -hmm. it's kind of learning different things like that. Just, you know, cast your camber and um kind of messing with the shocks and the right height and this and that and changing shocks every you know every other day he has shocks and i have shocks so i've been ch using his and you know stuff like that so um but the you know, initial thought was i it, it's good you know it's really good it, the rear end's amazing and like i said just mostly with the just front end stuff getting that feel that, that that i'm looking for is all and and i think this week we found something and it's going it's going in the right direction that's all i said that's all i have to say excuse me and um yeah, it's good, man. It's yeah. Good. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, for so long, and I, I'm sure you're the same way, but it felt like for so long, it was like, you thought of the Honda was just such a great, reliable combination. You just felt like, like that, I don't know, like that was the setup, you know, like yep. nothing was yep. substantially better or whatever. And Agreed. it happened, it turned so fast. And now it's like, man, the mad rush is to go to Yamaha and it makes sense. Um, obviously, you know, with all they do for the sport, they, they support our show and stuff like that, which is awesome, but it's almost like it finally feels like the time that has passed since Honda had a machine out there. Um, feels like it finally, it finally caught up with them that, yeah. Hey, we got this futuristic bike. We got this new age bike, the Yamaha versus the old Honda. And it's and it finally caught up with them that the Yamaha is just the way to go. I believe, I believe that's true. You know, we've been riding a, a buttload and what are we a month in now of, of like full that. training and, and we dude, we haven't worked on the bikes. That's awesome. I mean, I changed a clutch and that's in the oil and like, we haven't touched them. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy to think about because my Honda would be half smoked. I would have to almost build a whole new bike. Right. I'm not joking. It's like that I every know. year I, I get a brand new bike and, and a month and it, it about a month and a half. I get in and it's a brand new machine. The thing literally at a month and a half mark, you can't keep it together. Mm -hmm. And you have to literally start over and build a brand new one for it to even hold together again. It, it was just crazy. And every time you go ride, you'd break something and you worked on it five hours a day before thinking you fixed everything. Yeah. And then you go and then something else happens and then a motor breaks and then this, it's just, it got to the point where I think Joel can say the same thing that that made it not fun anymore. Mm -hmm. When you go to the track every day, you can't even enjoy your job anymore like this is what we why we do it we enjoy it and mm -hmm. when you go to the track and it breaks every time you ride what, what's enjoyable about that no i mean you're exactly right like even for me i mean obviously like i'm not at your level never was but i'm not even lining up in the pro class anymore but even now like sometimes on the back of my mind at all times you know riding and i and i love my hondas or whatever but uh it's always on my mind that, Hey, like this thing is, is either it's going to break eventually, or is this the day? Like when you go practice, I just want to be able to ride something. That's why I'm so intrigued by the Yamaha. And then to think that it doesn't even need to be a stalker to be able to just go, to just go ride this thing. Um, go be able to just go have fun on it. Like that's the, that's the thing that I think is suckering more and more people in, um, and convincing them that it's finally time to go do it because we just want to be able to go spin laps on a reliable machine. That sounds like what you guys have. And Joel told us that it was an instant, instant improvement, instant upgrade for him. Uh, you yep. know, whether it was the power, like you referenced, it seems like that combination's really gotten figured out. Um, and he also talked about the rear end being, you know, so rider friendly. Uh, he just said from the, from the very beginning, it was an upgrade for him. Was that the same for you? Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. The rear end was definitely what I noticed first. Like I said, and the front end's always, some people are more particular than others, you know, a rear end, you can get it to work good. And, you know, if somebody can say it works good and the other person pretty much agrees, you know, and 
for the front end, some stuff that, you know, people have certain tend- tendencies to, to like and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. I'm one of them. And so is Joel. He likes different things than I do, but um, we're trying to find that fine line, but it was definitely an improvement right off rip. No doubt. Um, I really, like I said, I was, I was so excited to ride it and I, and I freaking burnt a set of clutches up because it was so fast. Like I didn't even know how to ride the thing, man. I was trying to go through a corner. I'm like, Whoa, whoa. Like, you know getting out of control like hang on so it was um it was an instant improvement for sure no yeah. doubt man no yeah. doubt and what's crazy is you're, you're talking about the stalker you're talking about the stalker i legit just i just got a stalker i saw and i put nerf bars on it yep and did like the oil tank you got like an oil overflow delete thing that you do to them right away okay i guess okay and i did that and i put nerf bars on it and not wheels and tires nothing dude i just rode it and it's so rideable and my, at my track the vines i mean you sh- you've seen videos the place is pretty gnarly mm-hmm. i jumped everything i jump everything with ease like no problem it's bone stock yeah. it's 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 awesome man they're they're crazy to think about like i never thought that i would get on a stock machine and be like this is this is the beast knees i didn't even like the bikes riding like a dragster the uh-huh. front end's really low the rear end's high it's not set up at all but i can go ride it and be comfortable on it almost right away and no stabilizer i didn't put a stabilizer on it that's right. sketchy i wouldn't recommend that <laughs> i would I would recommend a stabilizer first but yeah. i mean it's just crazy crazy to think about that uh you know we would i wouldn't even step foot on a stock honda mm-hmm. oh no. cody i would I, you would kiss me kiss my butt you know right and you somebody be like we're race that in the stock class and dude i'm not killing myself mm-hmm. you know what i mean so it's just kind of crazy i can go do that at my track which is a crazy track and uh, and jump everything you know it's just crazy well and for the for since the the pro stock class became a thing and watching them guys you know ride that uh that class those bikes as fast as they did um you know on pretty close to stock machines it's it 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 truly is amazing that's why uh that's why that's something that you know i need to do as well but um i was gonna ask you i mean how long has it been since you rode a yamaha i feel like it's been since since your dad had an old school yamaha like when we were racing mini it was yeah yeah it was it was when i was racing i was racing super mini against joel in 2000 it was the off season of 2006 going to 2007 i was 14 years old and i I was on my dad's yfc (laughs) he bought from josh williams it was pro-am bike josh williams and this bike which crazy this is like i don't even know why i got on it because i was a bike that hurt my dad really bad okay it was when he had a bad accident okay and uh it was like there's this brand new bike we bought from josh williams and he got an accident with it and he was like messed up from it really bad from racing okay and uh there i was that winter right after he got out of the hospital on that bike freaking at hard rock with rodney gentry um <laughs> training me believe it or not uh-huh. we trained that that off season and then uh yeah, I went and went on to win the Super Mini Championship and then race against you that year in WPSA on 300, which mm-hmm. you beat me in. Whatever, dude. It's, it's fun. <laughs> That's not I, – I didn't bring it up, so <laughs> – uh, But that's that was the last time I rode a Yamaha, and then we got a Suzuki that next off season. Yep. But that – technically it's made me what I am today. So yeah. here we are again. Hopefully yeah. it's, hopefully it's vice versa. Yeah. A, a lot, a lot has changed since, uh, since the last time that you were on a Yamaha. So it's, uh, it's pretty incredible. All right. So 2020 was, uh, was a tough season. Um, I'm sure, uh, it's one that you'd rather forget, uh, because it wasn't up to your standard, obviously. Um, but the day before Aonia at the start of the season there, uh, you know, you and I had spent probably an hour, um, talking and you were positive and upbeat, happy, ready. Um, and I'll tell you, man, I simply like blame the down year on how quickly it derailed because you were in podium position, um, and wrecked hard into that catch fence there that weekend. And it seems to all go South from there. You just, you know, you ended up getting hurt at pleasure Valley and in totality 2020, um, had to just be a tough pill to swallow. So, uh, I'll tell you, like, I believe it was just a series of unfortunate events and anybody that had to go through all the stuff that you went through was going to find themselves in your, in your position, probably wouldn't have done as well as you did. Um, you know, you fought your ass off like you always do. What, how do you look at it? Like, cause again, I just look at it as like, you never had a chance. It was a series of unfortunate events. That's what it is. You flush it, you move on. And now here's 2021 with another opportunity to show everybody, um, the real Jeffrey Australi. Yeah, I could agree with that. Um, I, I'd like to flush it down the toilet, you know, but it was like you said, in a series of unfortunate events. I mean, starting off the year at Daytona with mechanical, 
was is always devastating to me because that's that race means more to me than anything on the planet like if i ever win anything i want it to be that because that's my home race my family always goes this is one of those things that means a lot to me mm -hmm. and um i've been so close and have spectacular rides there for where to start like that um was really tough but it's happened before and i bounced back so i just i went on to the next one and you know like you said it happened at aonia when i had a, a tire blow off the bead weird deal never had it happen mm -hmm. um and then i wrecked into the fence and then you know kind of struggled here and there and just kind of didn't find my groove and then pleasure valley ended up getting hurt and um you know it's it was great to end the season though in south of the border with a fourth showing that me at i would say i was at 80 percent and coming in there 80 percent and and battling with thomas and doing and doing as well as i did mm -hmm. and fighting in the first moto from almost last to a fourth place position mm -hmm. was was huge for me to to know that i'm still there like i'm still i'm still who i am and to to end the season that way was was you know brought life back into me yeah. saying okay you can still do this it's not you were hurt all year it wasn't just a fluke you know it was like kind of how that happens is when you get hurt and you you think you're healthy but you're still struggling but you know you go to the race still expecting to do what you're supposed to do and and it didn't happen that was uh it was it was tough man it was really definitely tough and uh to to get that at the end of the year was it was a change in my career because i don't know if i would have came back uh i i mean i i feel that i feel that i feel that way i don't i don't yeah you know, i don't i just don't know I, I how i felt how that year went and i got hurt again and i got another bad concussion like i don't need i didn't need to do it you know i just felt that at that time that i didn't really want to do it but you know to go and and i was you know somewhat healthy and i felt well when i went to south of the border and i was able to do what i did um it kind of brought back life to me and realized that you know i i got i got more in me and um i could do this still well, so i'm glad that i'm glad that that happened honestly yeah me too uh i'm i'm glad too because the the conversation we had prior to south of the border um it was like you were yeah you were over it you were defeated you were whatever name the word you want to use um so to end it that way i thought was so cool and again i'm so glad that you're coming back um because i didn't want to see you go out that way you know um yeah i appreciate that and i think another thing was that we were talking about earlier was my bike always broke every time i rode it the same way joel's did like mm -hmm. i every time i went to ride I couldn't even hardly ride because it broke every time. I'm like, what am I doing here? Why am I, why am I even going to the track? Mm -hmm. I'm going, I'm spending all this money and wasting my time to go to the track train and I go out there and the bike breaks. And one of these times it's going to hurt me. And it has hurt me before mm -hmm. those Hondas have hurt me before mm -hmm. really bad. So yep. it's just like one of those yep. things like, man, and he said he was switching Yamaha. I'm in, you know what I mean? I was like, I'm in that's yeah. that. And doing well at the end, end of the year was was definitely the changers. I was like, man, I'm, I'm all in one more year, at least, you know, I, I got it in me. And, you know, if I do well, I might be Chad, I might race till I'm 35, you know, I don't know, but you know, it's just, I think I needed that breath of fresh air. Like he's bringing, bringing us with these Yamahas, David. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just, just doing that at the last race. So um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a good year. I think we're me and Joel feeding off each other too. We're working together more than probably we ever have even more than last year at club and max, mm -hmm. you know, we, we were staying at my house. So we're kind of, always right here you know it's like like it where he's right in my front yard so um yeah we're we're just doing everything together so it's good that's awesome you mentioned chad i mean he went through a lot of hardships too coming up right like you know he he went from i mean he spent a lot of years he spent you know he spent five years or whatever um you know trying to make it uh really make it get to you know championship contention contention and then getting over the hump but he had his same stuff he got hurt and um had plenty of bike failures and stuff like that so you, you never know i mean you it's like he had that first career and then he hit the ground running and you know then we remember the last 10 years but yeah i mean if if things if the tide turns and he was 27 or 28 i believe when he first when he won his first one that's, even 29 that's what i'm saying he's like where you are now yeah, that's why I, you got to think, you know, uh, everybody says, you know, you know, you're in your prime at your young age. And I said this last year, the same thing that I don't think I am, man. I, I think I have more knowledge to learn and more things to learn on that machine that I can, mm -hmm. I can do better. I learn every day. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, riding, especially riding with Joel, I still learn every day. I'm trying to go faster. The guy's the fastest kid on the planet right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
he's incredible. So what, what better person to try to go faster with and than with him. So yeah, agreed. Uh, and, and Joel, speaking of Joel, he predicted on the last episode that it was going to be a Renaissance year for you in 2021. Um, and obviously so many of us would love to see that it, but it wasn't long ago that week in and week out, it was a battle Royale between you and Thomas Brown for that, you know, that podium spot, that third podium spot or whatever. Um, and he's gone now. So, you know, you've seen success at Daytona before, um, you know, you, you I, I mean, maybe things are just primed, like, let's start this thing off on the right foot. Let's grab a podium at Daytona and, uh, you know, kind of uh, start this next chapter of your career that you, you're kind of talking about. I feel like, feel like, uh, I mean, it's kind of like the table set for you to do it. And uh, I mean, just to have the opportunity, like you said, on a, on a new solid, good bike, good team. Uh, it seems like it's positive and happy atmosphere. Like everything is good and positive. Um, I feel like the table for could sure. be, could be set for you to hit the ground running at Daytona and then ride that wave of momentum um, throughout the season here. And I can't wait to see it. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. I'm really excited and I appreciate that Cody. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's been a long time coming and, you know, there was a time where it wasn't, I wasn't just battling. I wasn't battling just Thomas for the third place. Spot. Right. Yeah. I was, I was in the lead. I was, you know, battling with Joel and Chad there for a couple of years and just kind of a series of unfortunate events getting hurt a lot. I mean, I've been hurt more than a lot of people know. And, you know, and even at that rate, that one at Pleasure Valley, I shouldn't have came back this year. I should have never been back on the floor with her. Mm -hmm. I was, I got a really bad concussion, really bad hurt, hurt shoulder, but you know, that's just, I can't sit there. I can't, I can't do it. I have to try like, you know, and that's, that's where I've always been. I've always been there even when I'm hurt. And that's where it shows is, is the bad results come from is I'm not healthy. I, I haven't been in, in a long time and that's where I'm hoping this year, you know, everything's been going really well. I've been super healthy. Um, I feel better, you know, than I have in a while just taking care of myself a little, a little more. And, you know, as I'm getting older, I'm learning that as some things are, you know, in the past, you know, and like the drinking and all that stuff and the off season stuff. So I've been taking care of myself a little more and, and just, you know, doing my thing. And I think that's going to prevail here in the long run, you know? Yeah, I, I agree hundred percent. I mean, I remember sitting in this seat last year, talking to you and saying, Hey, you know, you've, for as long as we can remember, you haven't been healthy. Um, and we were ready for a year of health and, you know, uh, prosperity. And it just, it just didn't happen. It didn't work it out. Didn't happen. Well. Yeah. It didn't work out too well. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, that's, it that, happens to the best of us. You're right. I, it's, it's behind me. It's behind me. And, uh, you know, it, I think it's going to go well. I think this, this bike is, uh, very predictable, very well. It work, very works very well. And this, you know, it, I don't think it's going to give me that break where, like it's going to break and, and put me on the ground. Like I think the Honda has in prior times, you know, as, as hurt me pretty bad. So I think this thing is, uh, you know, well built. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll be good there in that side of things. Yeah. Well, it's just up to me as long as I don't wreck. <laughs> Well, I can't wait to see it, pal. Um, I think that that's a perfect way to, to end this interview. Uh, I feel like, uh, again, I, again, I feel like it's, uh, it's just great to hear um, the optimism and the, you know, that spark back in your voice, because uh, <laughs> this, this thing can beat a person down. Um, and then to have you overcome it, I feel like uh, I just can't wait to see um, all the good things that are, are ahead for you in 2021. I appreciate that, Cody. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. I love talking with you and uh, you know, I hope everybody enjoys this, uh, this, this episode and hope we can, um, you know, kick off the year right in Daytona and then get ourselves a podium and, uh, you know, ride it out. Like you said. So I really appreciate you having me again. Um, we'll, uh, we'll see you soon enough. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 again, I can't thank you enough for joining us. The fans obviously love you. So um, always pumped to have you on and uh, yeah, I mean, same, same, same goes to you. Grateful to call you a friend. Always uh, you're always welcome here. And uh, yeah, so I can't thank you enough, pal. Yeah. Thanks man. Appreciate it. That's Jeffrey Rostrelli brought to you by Manscaped. Use discount code digging deep 20 for 20% off at manscaped.com. Again, that's our guy, Jeffrey Rostrelli, ready for a big time bounce back year in 2021. The digging deep ATV MX podcast is brought to you in part by DID racing chain and their 520 ATV2 chain. This patented X-ring chain boasts a steel alloy construction for reduced weight, increased strength, and a longer overall chain life, making it the optimal ATV racing chain. Pick up an ATV2 chain today at your local dealer or wherever DID chains are sold. Don't forget about their motocross, off-road, and street bike chains as well. Wherever you go, go with DID.
The Digging Deep ATVMX podcast is also sponsored by DP Brakes, a longtime supporter of ATV racing and the world leader in centered brake technology. DP has been dominating the ATV world for decades, supporting the best four-wheeled racers on the planet. 2021's impressive lineup includes Joel Hetrick and Jeffrey Rastrelli of the Phoenix Racing Team, myself, Cody Jansen, and my back-to-back national championships, Baldwin Motorsports, Ford Brothers Racing, Nick Janusa, Wesley Wolf, and many more, including all of the top 14 GNCC Series pros, led by the champ Walker Fowler, Bryson Neal, Cole Richardson, Jared McClure, and Chris Borich. These top riders continue to appreciate the high performance and impressive durability that their DP brakes have to offer, products that ultimately help place them on the top of the podium. Available at www.dp-brakes.com, purchase at your local dealer, or message the show for their contact info today. What are you waiting for? Join the best ATV riders in the world on DP brakes. Just like the sport of ATV motocross as a whole, our Digging Deep community is brought together by the love for racing that we all share. Our sport is compiled of many great people, and leading that charge is the Launderville family at Launderville Steel Enterprises and Concrete Supply. This racing-owned family business is a steel and concrete supplier serving the entire United States. Launderville Steel is a full-service steel supplier of new and surplus steel, aluminum, and stainless steel products headlined by the 4130 chromoly tubing and plate used in the building of chassis for ATVs and UTVs, off-road truck racing, late model dirt and pro tractor pulling series, drag racing, and more. Launderville Steel loves their racing just as much as we do, but don't forget about their concrete division as well. With over 25 years of experience, the concrete division can supply everything you need to complete your next business or personal project. Their central Midwest location enables LSC to easily serve customers across the United States. For a quote, additional info, answers to more of your questions, or to talk a little racing, head over to LaundervilleSteel.com or give them a call today. We are proud to be partnered with yet another racer-owned company. Thank you, Launderville Steel Enterprises and Concrete Supply. All right, guys, this next guest is both a a great dude and a great rider. Uh, We've done some battling ourselves in past years, and now uh, he's primed primed and ready to make his full-time debut in the AMA ATV Pro class. Brought to you by DP Brakes. It's not too late to join DP's 2021 roster, so get in touch with our friend Larry Mills or head over to www.dp-brakes.com today. Say hello to Michael Allred. What's up, buddy? Stoked to get you on here finally. What's going on, Cody? I appreciate it, man. I've been waiting on the invite, so it's an <laughs> honor to be here. Uh, we're stoked to have you. Uh, first of all, I have to congratulate you on a number of things. Uh, you and your wife are married now. Um, you guys announced that uh, you know you're welcoming a new addition to the family as well, and you're you know, uh, like I said, you're ready to embark on your first full season as a pro. So it sounds like it's a it's a great time to be Michael Allred. Yeah, man. Right now it's 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 busy season for sure. Um, <laughs> we uh. <laughs> Training's in full swing, getting baby rooms right, getting everything prepared. Um, we're looking forward to a good year. Yeah, nothing, not like uh, nothing like uh, having everything, like all the biggest things in your life, all happening at the exact same time. Yeah, 2020 was huge for me. Huge. <laughs> no, got that's married, awesome. got a baby on the way. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, we're so stoked to have you uh, have you on here. So stoked for you across the board with all the awesome things that you guys have going on. Uh, let's talk about the racing a little bit. Um, you're coming off a stellar season. That's how you finished runner up in pro am, and uh, you already got your first taste of pro class action, kind of um, under your belt at the the season finale last season. So. Tell me about that experience a little bit. You can talk about your season last year um, in pro am, and then talk about uh, you know what it was like to you know make the move to pro class at the end of the year. It had to be like a dream come true. Yeah, it definitely was. We uh, the plan was last year we went in pro am. Um, we was hoping for a top three, so we bettered that. Um, which was awesome. wasn't wasn't planning on that. With Decker, Decker was out, so. So that kind of helped us. That was unfortunate for him, and I hated that. But um, it was good. Um, I knew the starts were key, so I had to be ready for the starts, Um, which my starts was there all year. Yeah, they were. Um, Which was that Baldwin motor. It wasn't it, – it was partially me, but it was mostly <laughs> the bike. 
<laughs> okay, um, yeah. I know I didn't have the speed, but I had consistency, and I, I've raced for a while now, so so I've I've got some. I don't know what would you would call it, some maturity to the sport. Exactly. Yep. Um. So I know how to play it smart. When to play it smart. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, we had uh, not to cut you off there. We had uh, Logan Tremellen on, who I know you spent a little time with recently, and that's literally the exact word I used uh, when I was talking to him. I'm like, Mike's been around for a while. He's got maturity that some of those other guys aren't going to have, and I feel like that's something that obviously you showed last year. I mean, you were your starts were good. You were consistent. You were strong. You ran, you know, to and through the finish line. That was something that was a strength of yours last year, and I think it's going to be a strength of yours, um, you know coming up too. So you're, you're exactly right. But uh, yeah, talk, talk some more about that. Didn't want to cut you off, but wanted to tell you that, yes, that maturity uh, and being around the block, like you have been, that's going to be a strength of yours. It was last year. It's going to be this upcoming year too. Yeah. Well, this upcoming year, I'm going to, I'm going to have to put a little maturity aside and try to find another gear within myself. Um, mm -hmm. When I did the pro debut at South of border, just to see what it was all about. It's a big step the the 20 minute motos the intensity the everything's different yeah um when you when you're running those other when you're running pro-am and when you're running the amateur classes you you've got those laps you 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 can train longer for those motos so when you go race an amateur race it it's easier mm -hmm. you say than when you you have to double your training to run the pro class so i'm looking forward to that and we've i've been in I go to work every day and then I come home and I'm on the gym. I'm in the gym right after work or I get on the mountain bike and I go hit the trails. Um, whatever I can do, training's in full swing and I'm doing whatever I can to get ready for day time. Yeah, man. I, I, I agree. Obviously. Um, I know what that's like, but I feel like, um, so yes, like maybe you have to grab another gear, another half a gear. You need to find a little bit like everybody, you know, like everybody has to, when they go to the pro class, but I feel like if you're, so what I think about with you, I mean, maybe this was a strength of mine too. When I was racing the pro class was my, if I could make my first lap in my last lap as close to the same as possible. Um, that's, that's, going to help you like that's that was like my yeah. thing at the end of the races yeah. i could make moves on guys because my stamina was there my endurance was there my strength was there so I yeah, feel, right. go yeah. ahead and right now I, f I feel good with my stamina stamina's there stamina's mm -hmm. good yep. um i just gotta focus on them intense motos put down some intense laps get it in my head that i can run with these guys and not not forget where i came from Exactly. I feel like that's what I'm saying. I feel like that's something you are going to be really strong uh, at. That's a, that's something that you're going to be really good at as we look to, to this season as a full-time pro. Um, because I feel like that's something that you're going to be able to do your first laps and your last laps are going to be very close. Uh, at least that, I mean, that's my expectation for you. Um, and yeah, I mean, like that's, that's what, that's the fine line. Like everybody's trying to go as fast as they can at the beginning of the race. And then you settle into your pace and you just don't want to fall off at the end of the, at the end of the races, at the end of the motos. But I feel like that's something that you're going to be good at again. Like I, I kind of, like I think of you as a savvy veteran, uh, even though you're going to be like a, like a rookie in the pro class, but I don't look at you as a typical rookie, if that makes sense. Yeah. I'm wish, I wish I would have got, had been running the national level longer. Um, mm -hmm. I raced locally. I started locally when I was 15. I, this would be my sixth year nationally. Okay. So it's been, but it's, so been a, like it's been a quick rise though. Like, I feel like you've, you know, especially in recent years, like you've been making strides every year. So I feel like that's, that's gotta be exciting for you to see like how quickly you rose on the national scene since getting there, but also like your growth has been pretty big every year. So if you just continue that, I mean, you gotta, you gotta expect to take another step forward this year. Like that's obviously your expectation. Yeah. I know what I need to do. Um, Chris puts a lot into it mm -hmm. every year. Uh, he had me working with Thomas, and that helped me extremely. Um, it's the this this sport's a big head game right now, and yes. and if you get in your own head, it's it's really going to hurt. So so we're just going to go out humble, and we're going to try to have fun and put down solid laps and see how it goes. We have expectations, but 
they could change within the first round. Well, yeah, of, of course. Uh, I feel like too, um, feel like when you're maybe got a little bit of a different program than some of those kids that are maybe at a training facility or whatever, and they're doing it full time and whatever, like that's their grind, right? Like they can, they can get lost yeah. in the monotony of everyday riding and training. And yes, like sea time is obviously it's invaluable, but when, you know, you're someone like you or, or, or I, I guess, like when you're working like you are and the, the riding is like your fun, it's like your vice and, and stuff like that. I feel like you can also almost use that to your advantage. Cause at the end of the day, like there's not the same kind of pressure maybe on you as there are on other riders. If, if that makes sense, I don't want to put any words in your mouth, but like you're doing it like it's still at the end of the day, like it's fun. Like you're racing in the pro class. It's the very top level. But um, if you can keep that fun, if you can keep that fun at the front of your mind, I say this pretty much on every episode, but I wish I could go back and tell myself that is if just keep it fun, whatever you do, just keep it fun. And you're going to be more successful. Yeah. We want to keep it fun, but you, we don't want to slouch right now either. We finally got it up to where we want to be. And now we don't want to slouch, so uh, mm-hmm. we're going to try to just keep it fun and go out there and put down some solid motos. Yeah, that's awesome. I wanted to ask you about the pro stock class. You raced the pro stock class all of last season, and I have to believe that that's a good feeling to kind of have in your back pocket um, because you don't have to worry about lining up with Chad Weenan and Thomas Brown, Joel Hetrick, um, some of those other guys because you've already done that. So you don't have to worry about doing it for the first time, which is something that was a real fear for me when I jumped up to that class. Uh, So um, talk about, I guess, how valuable the pro stock class is for incoming pros like you. Yeah, it's a, it's an awesome class. Those bikes are so fun to ride. I believe it. Um, And getting to race against those guys before I moved up to the pro class, that, that was a big help seeing seeing what they do off the line how they where they where they move on the track you know um just trying to latch on and sometimes i could but a lot of times they would just gap me and gap me and gap me but i'm back there trying and you know that's that's pushing me and i feel in my head that if i if i put really put my head down that that i could put in some good motos and hang with those guys. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, just being on the track with them, just being on the track, I think is invaluable. Like you learn things, you see things differently. You see that pace. Like I know you worked with Thomas, so you saw some of that pace, not being on the track in, in, in pro stock. Lines, lines you'll never see in amateur mm -hmm. class. Exactly. It's, it's just something you can't teach and and seeing that pace is also something you can't teach. I mean, um, you might think you're going uh, as fast as you can possibly go. And then you see some of those guys and it's like, Oh, (laughs) Oh, like they, they just pantsed me, you know? Yeah. Like you tied to a fence post. Exactly. Um, so I feel like, I feel like you being exposed to that, uh, from Thomas is invaluable. Then that pro stock class, I, I think as like a, as a stepping stone, it, it can almost act like for you, it was kind of like a precursor to actually going pro. I feel like that's uh, so valuable. So I wanted to touch on that. And then again, we talked about the maturity thing, but I kind of wanted to double down on it. Cause I had it in my notes here to talk about it next, even though we kind of, um, touched on it already, but that's another advantage that I truly think is, is something something that you're going to use to, uh, to your, you know, kind of a strength of yours use to your advantage. Um, you know, you've, uh, you know, you've, we've referenced it, I guess I referenced it at the beginning that, um, you know, that we had done some battling in 2019, but our, career paths were inverted. Like I was coming off of five years as a pro and your career trajectory was on the upswing towards becoming a pro still at that point. And I'll tell you, and I'll tell you, like I told you before, uh, I think all the time, if I could go back and race pro now, I would be so much more successful simply because I'm so much more mentally strong now. Uh, I feel like that would be a strength of mine when then like my advantage was at the end of the race when my, you know, my, my fitness or whatever could be my advantage, but it was like at the beginning of the race, uh, maybe I just wasn't mentally there. It was like my, it was like, 
I don't know. It was, it was just a, my own mental hurdle. Like I, like I maybe didn't think of myself on those other guys level. And now I look at things so differently. So uh, again, I feel like that's going to be a strength of yours because, you know, you and I are, are similar age now. And I feel like it's almost like you're doing what I wish I could do, you know, taking all your experiences, all your life and on track experiences, taking that age, that maturity that you have and going to the pro class now with that kind of, uh, you know, kind of, um, mental vantage point or whatever, however you want to say it. I feel like that's going to be a strength. And when we stack you up against some of them younger kids, um, that their whole world is dependent on, you know, how they do that day or whatever. Uh, yes, you want to be successful, but you got other life things going on, other, other great things going on that however you do on race day is just the icing on the cake. And truly, I think that you're going to see the most success, um, you know, that you could possibly see with where you're at in life. And now like it's, it's just created this great scenario for you where you're going to be successful on the track. I hope that wasn't too long winded, but I feel like, I feel like that's going to be yeah. a, I think it's going to be a strength of yours. I really do. Thanks man. Yeah. I really feel we took the right steps. Um, I jumped in my first year in the nationals. I jumped in in a pretty high class and I was taking myself out every race. So I had to slow it down and that, that smartened me up a little bit and I had to go out there and mellow off and just ride my race. And that's how I'm going to do in the pro class. That's what you got to do. Like you was talking about when you start and you was in your own head and you just got to go ride your own race. When that mm -hmm. gate drops, you just, you act like it's you out there and you just push your hardest and where you end up's where you end up. I mean, those guys, they, pro class ain't no joke and they put their lives in for it. So. Mm -hmm. well I'm and i'm excited for i'm excited to test my skills and really get a full year under my belt and see how that goes hopefully i'll get the chance to do another year yeah that's awesome i i, I can't wait to see it um and again i'll say it one more time i feel like with what you saw from thomas I wish I would have had something like that because I didn't, I'm, I'm, I'm friends with a number of those guys, especially now, but back then I didn't see uh, anybody's program, like a top tier guy close enough to, to know maybe like the little intricacies of what they were doing and what they're doing behind the scenes. And um, it was just like a mystical thing to me. It's like, Oh, I wonder, wonder what so-and-so is doing. Uh, I never saw that. So I feel like that's another thing that you have um, an advantage maybe on some other guys is, is you saw one of the, one of the greatest guys of our generation um, in all that you know, he put into his racing. I feel like anything that you picked up on from Thomas that you can uh, you know, kind of integrate into your own program. Um, I feel like obviously that can only help. Yeah. I, I really do appreciate Thomas helping me out. Um, I, he helped me out that last year for the full year. And, um, I soaked it up like a sponge, man. Yeah. Everything he was doing, I was watching him. every. He was in his, I, the first time I traveled down to his house, he was in his garage. He was working in there by himself. And Mason was, me and Mason was in the trailer and I just couldn't take it, man. I just walked in there and I was like, hey, you need some company. And I just was in there working on his bike with him. Well, I wasn't working on him, but I was watching him. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was just cool to get to train with him, man. It was a dream come true. Mm -hmm. Everything he taught me and, and he, he puts a lot of heart and soul in it. So, and I feel I feel like we had the same love for this sport and I just took everything that he had and fit it into my schedule. Yeah. That's everything awesome. that I could do on my time and with everything else going on. And it really, it, it really took me up to the next level. I felt like this year, this past year, 2020 was my best year in the nationals. I feel like I rode my best. I felt my best after the races everything just felt good. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think that obviously um, some of that is credit to Thomas. So I'm glad, uh, glad we could touch on that. Tell me about the, what's the story behind the number eight? Um, is it as simple as four plus plus four from your, you know, previous number 44 <laughs> or uh, give me the story on that. Cause I thought it looked sick on the bike. Yeah. I like the number eight. Um, it was really up in the air when, when I realized I had to change my number. Okay. Um, I had never really thought about it too hard. So I was thinking 44, 144. Okay. Or something, but I didn't want a three letter, three, three number. Yeah. You know? Yep. Three digit number. Um, 
you didn't you didn't just you didn't just you didn't, you didn't just think about you know calling chad saying hey you know i know you're number one now uh can can you just give me that number 44 you know i joked about it, I joked about it but <laughs> no, i didn't call him up um chris called me up one day and he was he was like hey what do you think about number eight and i was like i mean i like the number eight he said well four plus four is eight that's what thomas said and i was like you know what eight will be all right Mason's 08, so I'll be eight. There you go. We uh we raced with Tyler Turner. He was 28, and yep. he, and then we raced with Dustin Bowden. Also, he was 18, so it just fit. Okay. Four plus four is eight. I like it. I like it. I like a, like a single digit number in general. I just feel like they look good. And the number eight, I'm always weird about like things being symmetrical. I feel like, and the eight is perfectly symmetrical. So it just, it, it fits. I feel like, uh, feel like it looked really good. When I saw the first pictures of the number eight on that bike, um, I really liked it. And when I first went pro, you couldn't be a single digit number. So that was like a big envy of mine. Like I, I, I wanted I to, that. I wanted to be, but at the time you had to be a top 10 guy to get a single digit number. So, um, yeah, like I, 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 I'm in love with the single digit numbers. So seeing, you know, all you guys now with the single digit pro numbers out there, you and Linquist and, uh, some of these other guys, I love it. So, uh, I needed, needed to touch on the single digit cause they look so good on the bike. Appreciate it, man. I like it too. Yeah. So, um, I'll get you out of here on this. I, I can't thank you enough for doing this, by the way. Uh, so what do you need to do this season for you to consider it a success. Uh, you don't need to get super specific on goals. I know, you know, nobody likes to put something on paper and, um, you know, try to put the cart ahead of the horse, but what do you have to do this season for you to think of it as a, uh, a success and another, uh, you know, great year, another building year, another year where you took a step forward. For me, I just want to find some more speed. Um, I just want to finish races. Um, if we can finish in the point standings, not crash out, get hurt, anything like that, um, I would consider it being a good season. Okay, I, I get think the full, get a get a, get my first full year under my belt. Agreed. I mean, I feel like um, I'm always I, I talk about this. I think probably more than most, but uh, foundation is such a big thing. And this first year, especially at the start of the year here, you're just going to be laying the foundation for you to build off of. And, um, I feel like you got the right mindset. You know, you just, you got to go test the waters, then you got to just build from there. So if you go out there, you ride, like, you know, how you be consistent, like you've always been. Um, I feel like that's going to have you see, uh, you know, the most success. And I feel like that's going to, um, you know, just, just create the, the best year that you could possibly have. But I really do believe um, your mindset is the mindset that everybody should have right now. Yeah, I just, I would like to go out and latch on to a couple people and pick my speed up. Like I said earlier in the show, my, my stamina feels good. I just need to find some more speed and I'm training hard every day. I'm trying to find it and eating right and doing what I can. Um, it's hectic right now with everything going on, but I feel it's going to be a great year for Huntscapes. Oh yeah. I like, I like to hear it. Have you ever raced at Daytona by the way? I have. Yes. I oh. raced um, the second year they had it and the third year they had it. Okay. Okay. So you got plenty of Daytona experience. I feel like that's another thing. Um, you never know now with it being pro only uh, or whatever. Um, but I feel like that's that track can be unique too. So I, yeah. that's the only reason why I had it down on my list of questions is I wanted to make sure that you've been there. Um, so you kind of know what to expect. And the track looked better than ever last year. I thought, I thought it looked like probably the best design they've had. So yeah, a lot of them said it was good. Yeah. Yeah. So if they have a track like that, I feel like it's going to be racy for you guys. And, uh, I feel like it'll be, I feel like it'll be, uh, you know, perfect. Good in daytime and rough and yep. deep sand. And there you go. Perfect, perfect setup for a good start to the year for you. Yes, sir. Awesome, man. Well, we're pulling for you. I can't thank you enough for joining me. Um, and yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to get you on here. We'll look forward to getting you on here after you get this thing kicked off and uh, you can come back on and give us an update on how things are going. 
Oh, yeah, man. Catch me when the nerves ain't so bad because it's still <laughs> a month away, but they're here. Right. I believe it. Well, uh, thanks again, buddy. Uh, like I said, we're pulling for you. Um, and yeah, can't thank you enough for, for joining us here. That's number eight, Michael Allred brought to you by our friends at DP breaks. See you soon, pal. Congrats on everything. And good luck. Appreciate it, Cody. See you. Pal. Thanks for having me. We are proud to be partnered with gripped gloves. Gripped is an ATV rider owned and operated brand with the rider in mind and the goal of keeping costs affordable. The Michigan based family operation recognizes riders desire to showcase their identity. Owner David Payne's love for eccentric colorways and crazy patterns shows in his product something not often found in the work of big manufacturers. Here to push stereotypes and limitations, Grip's drive is to produce a glove with cool colors and designs that won't break the bank. With comfort and quality as key motivators, the family affair is constantly working on the next more innovative and improved glove. Get a grip on life, join the Gripped movement because no one wants a bland glove. Check them out today at grippedgloves.com. That's G R I P T gloves.com and use discount code DIGGINGDEEP10 to save at checkout. 15 years into the brand's existence, Factory 43 is back with us and continuing to make huge waves in the ATV world. For the second consecutive season, Factory 43 is the official aluminum parts choice of the Phoenix Racing ATV team, providing their state of the art Evo Nerf bars, MX style front bumpers, and grab bars for some of the fastest riders on the planet. If you're in the market to upgrade your Nerf bars, bumpers, or grab bars, head over to factory43atv.com to see their full line of products available for all makes and models. Want to be just like Joel Hetrick and Jeffrey Rostrelli riding with Factory 43's industry leading products? Head over to factory43atv.com today. Bikes, Trikes, and Quads LLC has been supplying riders with aftermarket components from the industry's top brands for over a decade. With over 80,000 products in stock for your ATVs, UTVs, metric, and HD motorcycles, dirt bikes, and snowmobiles, Bikes, Trikes, and Quads LLC can tend to all your power sports needs, from hard parts to riding gear. Bikes, Trikes, and Quads also offers hard-to-find used parts for your vintage dirt bike, ATV, three-wheeler, or snowmobile. Use discount code ATVMX at www.btqllc.com for 10% off of orders of $100 or more. We're grateful to have Bikes, Trikes, and Quads LLC digging deep with us. Thank you, BTQ LLC. All right, guys, to conclude this episode, I wanted to bring on another industry insider to finish this thing strong. He spent years plugged into Thomas Brown's program, and nowadays he's the one wrenching for the Ford Brothers racing crew. Brought to you by Gripped Gloves. Use discount code DIGGINGDEEP10 at gripgloves.com. It's Mr. Nick Hickey. What's up, buddy? Thanks for jumping on the podcast here with us. Thanks, man. Thanks for the invite. I'm excited to be a part of it. I've listened to a lot of the episodes in the past, and it's just I've always wanted to be on, so it's kind of cool to get to finally do that. Yeah, I mean, we had uh, we had talked over the course of the year a little bit, I feel like, um, you know, finding the right time to get you on. And I thought that this may be the perfect time because I feel like this is interesting times for the team that you work for, for the Ford brothers racing team. Uh, I got to imagine things are getting crazy down there with the season just around the corner. Man, it's actually been pretty mellow uh, on our end. We've uh, had everything going where the boys transition. Mark Baldwin did a great job by getting uh, two bikes built. JB did built one bike. Mark built the other and it's been good the boys have been riding since uh I think after the banquet and then once the we got going it's we did a few test days got the boys comfortable and then started letting them loose on moto so it's been it's been exciting okay well that's good I mean I feel like this is the time of year um this is probably one of the most exciting times of the year as we kind of ramp up to to go racing and stuff so uh yeah it's exciting times but like you touched on with the Yamaha stuff um I don't know why but you guys switching to Yamaha's just wasn't something that was on my radar I don't know if it was the you know the Baldwin affiliation and how he's always kind of uh seemed like a Honda guy or, or what the deal was but that uh, that just wasn't something that I was expecting. I don't think anybody was. Uh, at one point, we were stuck on Hondas. We were going to stay. And then the next thing I know is I'm flying up to Baldwin's and JB's, and I'm tearing Yamaha's apart. So it got ex- it got exciting. Uh, the boys, like I said, they've, they've transitioned to it, and they went full bore with it, actually going into it. So okay. they can 
they completely dropped the Honda thing and they went straight to Yamaha, you know? Well, when we had Bryce on, you know, he said that, uh, I mean, and everybody we've had on has said that the, the Yamaha has been a great thing to switch to. Um, but Bryce was excited. And, uh, so, so tell me from your perspective, how has it been so far? Cause I have to imagine it's a, it's a huge process with such a big operation, having two pro riders like that. Um, it's gotta be a big, big undertaking for a guy like you, I'm assuming. It's, I, I don't do it alone. So that's the best part for me. Um, you know, I do their day to day stuff and we, you know, we do the stuff at the house and I maintain throughout that course, but you know, Mark Baldwin and JB and now with uh, Walsh coming in, we have a great team behind the boys, whether it's uh, whatever breaks or something malfunctions, you know, those guys are always back there. So it makes my job a whole lot easier. So it's not just me helping the two boys. It's, it's a team effort and it's awesome because, you know, I get to work with the best in the business. I would, I would say Mike Walsh, JB, and even Baldwin, they're the best at what they do. And it's great to have them behind me to say, Hey, this is what you need to do for the boys. So mm -hmm. it's great for both of us and, or all three of us actually, as, as Bryce and Cody coming up as being pro riders. And then as me being their mechanic, you know, I can learn from Mark, the boys have, so much knowledge from Mark and JB and now Mike, you know, from all their championships with other riders back mm -hmm. in the day. So it's a great time. Yeah. I mean, speak about that. Uh, I guess that um, network that you guys have or, or whatever you want to call it. I feel like uh, you guys, the Ford family, the Ford team there has created such a, uh, I mean, yeah, that's a powerhouse team I feel like. And it feels like, whether it's brand by brand or sponsor, I mean, every little, every little uh, sponsor that the team has, it feels like, like, like that brand feels like they're actually invested, like truly invested in what you guys are doing. And I don't often get that feeling from, uh, you know, from a company always, but it's different with you guys. So talk about like the, the, just what a great um, effort that, the Ford brothers racing team has become, because it seems like, man, there's, there's no stone unturned. There's no eyes that aren't dotted or T's that aren't crossed with that team. It seems like a, like a truly amazing effort. And like those boys are um, getting everything that they could like ever given every chance with the best stuff, best network, best people just feels like a truly incredible effort by all of you, all you guys. Well, the best thing about it is John and Robin are former racers. You know, they didn't race motocross or anything, but they raced jet skis. So they know the competitive part of it and they know what it takes to win. And they were all and both Robin and John are uh, champions in their previous in the jet ski world and stuff like that. So they know what it takes. And, you know, when the boys, they they have a grasp on what it takes as well. And they know now being in the pro class, Bryce being a sophomore and Cody being a junior in it you know, they know what it takes and they're, they want to go to the top. And that's the best part of being with the Ford brothers is they want to be at the top and whatever it takes to get there, they will make sure or do the best they can to make it happen. You know, it's like you said, no, no stern, stone unturned or no T or I dot a T. I don't know, uh -huh, yeah. but it's, uh, you know, it's just like anything. If we have a problem with one part of the bike, say for instance, like, you know, we did some suspension testing. We weren't sure uh, they brought them back out. It's stuff like that that, you know, makes a champion. And a lot of riders don't get that is like you invest, you get what you invest in your program, you know. And so what they do is they invest everything to Bryce and Cody and they try to make Bryce and Cody the best they can and give them the best they can. And once they have, feel they've done that, it's it's in their hands at that point. Yeah, that's uh, that's awesome. Again, I feel like everything you guys are doing is uh, putting putting those two boys in in position to succeed. So um, great to see, and they're two they're two uh, two. I don't want to call them kids. They're two guys that. Um, I feel like are very easy to cheer for when I, when I talk to them, uh, I just, I like both of those boys so much that uh, I've become a very big fan of theirs. Yeah. Both kids are awesome as far as, you know, day-to-day -day stuff too. You know, Cody, Cody's a big joke guy that jokes around in the shop bryce he antagonizes it as well so it's it's definitely never a boring day in the shop we we all all have a good time but when it's time to get serious everybody when they put those helmets on it gets serious and they know they know what job they got to do 
Yeah, that's awesome. That's got a, I mean, that creates a cool work atmosphere for you too, I feel like. So uh, we're, we're a month out, just, to, just over a month out from the first race at Daytona. How are the boys looking? Um, because they're, they're both looking to take a, another step. Like you said, Bryce is a sophomore, Cody's a junior. How are things looking uh, with just over four weeks before Daytona? Pretty confident, to be honest with you, man. Like, and it's not to sound like Arian or anything, but the boys have been putting in a lot of work. Um, and it's like Cody, he's been ever since he's gotten a hold of one of the Yamaha's, he's been on it and he's been motoing, trying to get trying to get it figured out for Cody. Bryce is we've uh we've been working real hard to do that as well. He's finally getting into the moto side, and it's it's crazy, and it's crazy how much faster they are seeing both of them on these bikes and just and they talk about the handling all that all the time and how how much better it is than the the honda so it's been it's been exciting they're and every day they're slowly progressing as getting faster so it's making daytona very exciting for me at least i hope it's making it exciting for them too but they see it they feel it they get faster they see their lap times are getting faster it's it's all around a good thing no, uh, that's, that's great to hear. Uh, big changes for you guys. I mean, obviously we've been talking about it since, since you came on big changes with the, the new machines and stuff for, uh, for the Ford brothers racing team. We've seen some photos of, you know, Bryce's bikes. You mentioned bringing um, Mike Walsh kind of into the, into the fold. Now um, I'm seeing bikes that look like Chad Ween and replicas. I'm seeing some that look like full Baldwin builds. Uh, what can you tell me about that? I'm assuming you guys, uh, I know, like I mentioned, um, you're not going to leave any stone unturned. So I'm assuming you guys are just doing all kinds of testing of different setups, but I'm very intrigued by this. So what can you tell me? Um, I don't know the full extent of the details of, you know, what they've worked out, but I do know um, we have tested, we tested the wall stuff and Bryce really likes it. Okay. Cody's Cody seems to be liking the JB stuff. Um, we had Baldwin, build two full JB Yamahas and then two Walsh or Yamahas have came to the house and the boys have tried it. Um, we've tried, we've tried different shock setups. We've tried to figure it out. Um, we have had some insight from Chad, so it kind of helps, uh, kind of helps the progression. Uh, me and Bryce just actually recently got back from doing testing with Walsh in general. So it's been a good, it's been a good, way to find out which bike they like better you know mm -hmm. and that's what that's what it's all meant to be is they want to win and they're going to do what it takes and get on whatever they can to it's going to put them there well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the one thing that just stands out to me about the Ford program is that you guys are, I mean, it's again, it's doing whatever, anything and everything to, um, to be the best version of the, the team that you can be. But yeah, I was very intrigued when I'm seeing these bikes. And then I, then I saw you guys at Walsh, I think it was your post and I'm yeah. like, I'm like, man, like what's going on. So that was one of the things I was most intrigued to talk to you about. And I think that that speaks to all those guys that speaks to, uh, speaks to Walsh speaks, uh, to Chad, um, not necessarily secretive, right? Like it's, it's the, the helping of kind of the next generation of riders. We, we kind of all know, like you see Bryce is going to be, um, you know, kind of ushering in a new era of, of the sport, you know, eventually, if not now. Um, so I feel like that speaks to, speaks to, uh, you know, again, to those guys, you guys, it speaks to everybody, but, um, that was one of the things I wanted to touch on because I feel like, uh, you know, there's, there's change there, but you're bringing even more knowledge into the program. Yeah. And that's the biggest key in somebody's program is knowledge. It's like, I tell the boys all the time, you know, um, I'm not a Mark Baldwin. I can't tell you it stuff that he can or jb or even mike and then them be being friends with the other pro riders like a chad and a joel and even thomas when they worked with thomas uh not this year but last year and it's mm -hmm. like they have so much more knowledge and i'm you know soaking it up so much from being with thomas i soaked up a lot and it's like just trying to give them bits of that i know and then they always talk to baldwin they always talk to jb um bryce has been trying to figure out like setups for his Walsh bike now and it's it's a great collaboration for everyone in our program because it's a great time to like everybody figures hey I like this bike I'm gonna perfect it you know mm -hmm. um and with the Honda I know Bryce has said it a few times he feels like 
his Honda, you know, it could have used more power. It could have used this. Uh, Cody, kind of the same thing. Well, then they uh, they switch over to the Yamaha and they're like, wow, man, it's it's totally different. And so they love they're loving the power of the Yamaha and they're excited. And now it's just it's a it's go time. Yeah, I feel like, um, you know, it's cool because like so many people, maybe you sign a, I don't know, you sign a deal or you, you partner with a company and then you're kind of bound to um, their products or whatever. And I don't know what it is with, with the Ford brothers program with you guys, but I feel like, and maybe it's a part of, maybe it's part of it is that everybody wants a, a piece of Bryce or a piece of both of those boys because he, you know, they're the future. You guys are the future. Um, but yeah, I mean, to, to just create a scenario where you can test all this different stuff and come up with the best, uh, combination, um, that's not, uh, it's not uh, a luxury that everybody has. Right. Uh, so it's, it's, it, that's a special thing in itself. Right. And most of the deal parts with them, I'm that I'm not even included. Mm -hmm. It's, yes. it's like bike, bike show up and I'm, I'm like, all right, I get to work on this today type deal. So yeah. Um, yeah. with the, but with the Walsh bikes and the JB, it's, it's good to see. And it's good feedback also for, you know, Walsh and JB um, you have, you know, what this bike does different than the other one. And, you know, J you can relay those messages, say to JB or to M Mike, and, you know, it helps them make their products better for the future of, you know, ATV racing. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's touch on Cody Ford, the, the eldest Ford brother coming into his third season as a professional here, probably looking for a bounce back season. I would assume, as you know, I predicted Cody would be the, the digging deep, most improved pro award winner in 2020. Uh, that didn't happen for a multitude of reasons. Um, starting right away at the beginning of the year there, it just didn't feel like he had a fair shake. Uh, so I doubled, I, I doubled down, I'm doubling down. Um, I'm predicting that he's going to be the 2021 most improved pro Bro, tell me why I'm right. I think you're right, man, because honestly, we've shaken things up with the Yamaha. I'm excited to see Cody. I even told Cody last year when I first started, I think a Yamaha would be more suited for him. Okay. Um, and like you said, he didn't have a fair shake because obviously right before Daytona, we had a big get off and we had a crash and it was just, honestly, it was kind of devastating to the season. Um, it took him a little bit more time to get his confidence back and then Obviously, you saw when he did, he was pulling good starts. He was coming out of the gate good, and he was starting to finish like he should. And then, you know, the season's over. Um, mm -hmm. And COVID ne didn't happen, help anyone. So No, you're right. Uh, but this year, I feel like, man, he's he's got a different determination. And when you see him in the first race, you'll notice, like, he's dropped a lot of weight. He's uh, He's been on this new diet program. He's in a way going all in for himself too. And I, you know, I'm super pumped to be when we're at the races, I'm behind the number five. Cause you know, he's uh he's very exciting. He's fun to be around and race days. We keep it light. I really think Cody this year is going to be, be up there a lot, a lot closer to the top, top five, even I would stretch it to say even top three. Cause like I said, once he gets comfortable, the sky's the limits. And I see it every day at practice. Um, it's like those days he's super comfortable. He's right on Bryce every day. And, you know, obviously with the hype around Bryce, you know, he has the speed. He has the speed. It just doesn't come out all the time. But I'm hoping, like, this year he sees it. He gets confident with this new bike. Everything gels with him really well. And I think you see Cody, you see him back where he was. And maybe, like, he did at Sunset. He puts it on the podium a few times, you know. Maybe we can get a win. Exactly. There you go. I, I feel like too, I mean, both boys, um, they have an advantage that a lot of people don't have with having each other to ride with. Um, I mean, Bryce is next level fast. And for Cody to see that every day, like when you guys are at the practice track training, I just, I, he's got an advantage that a lot of people don't have. And then, uh, to touch on something that you talked about, um, about last season, um, I liked, I loved the fact that he was running that pro mod class too, because it was just like, he got a chance to go, you know, be 
Cody Ford. It was like, that was just, there was glimpses there where we saw more of his true colors. It was like, it just, uh, breathed a, a fresh breath of life into his program. I mean, yes, like the pro class is a grind. I'm not explaining anything to you. You know it, you've seen it, you've been right there for it. Um, yep. and I feel like that just, uh, it, it, it just, it was like a pick me up almost. And then you saw that even bleed over into the Saturdays of pro class racing where it was like, okay, I can, I can do this, you know? Um, so I'm glad that he was out there doing his pro mod thing too. Too. And I mean, maybe he would have won a title if he would have been out there all year, but just to see him out there leading laps, getting whole shots, winning races, that was a, that was an awesome thing for you guys. Right. And that's, that's the best thing is to have some, when you can lead some laps and even if though it's pro mod, it was good for him, you know, and it's like, not a lot of people knew this, but uh, at Aonia Pass, we had no, we weren't going into that and we weren't going to do pro mod. And I remember me and Cody were actually at the line while they were on the line. And uh, we got a phone call and John's like, Hey, we're racing. And Cody's like, I'm going to get ready. So it was like, we got the bike on the track and you know, it was, it was a great day. You know, I think, I think he came out in second or something like that. And I think they ended up winning it, but it's, it's crazy that that pro mod class and it gave him a little confidence, like you said, to to ride harder on Saturdays, you know, towards the next race. And it gave him a little more track time. So it was it was definitely a good confidence booster for him. And and I was glad we did that. And, you know, just like this year, he's got a lot of confidence going into this year. And I'm, I'm super pumped for that. And we're trying to build on that each day uh, with him. We're also trying to build with Bryce and we're just trying to put them in there where they belong, you know. Absolutely. I love to hear it. Uh, I can't thank you enough for joining us for this glimpse inside the, the Ford brothers racing program there. We'll get you out of here on this note. Um, tell me something unforgettable, amazing, unknown, something, anything about the legend, your buddy, Thomas Brown. Um, something <laughs> I, man, there's a lot of stories uh, that come to mind, but you know, Thomas has been my best friend for a long time. Uh, I think the best story was actually at Sunset Ridge. Um, they, you know, I, I'm a big person and we, we all went out to dinner and I don't like to be messed with, you know, and they, they always like to mess with me and stuff like that. Well, uh, him and his mechanic at the time, Brian Johnson, uh, we got back to the trailer and in his old stacker, uh, I took and hit up in the, bed over cab okay. you know and for the longest time they couldn't find me they never knew where i was they didn't do they were trying to pick on me while because i'm always the first one to sleep so okay and um so finally the next morning i woke up and i came out from i stacked all the pillows the way they were but i was behind the pillows where it looked like nobody was up there okay and uh, that was like one of the times i could get him and you know it's it's always a good time when they you know, they pick on you and you can finally kind of pick on them. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Yeah. The, uh, that's awesome. I, I needed, uh, needed to at least ask you about them because, um, just knowing the history, uh, between you guys and, um, it's awesome. Um, sports going to miss them for sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, hopefully it doesn't go too far and I'm glad that you found a, you know, a home inside the sport where you're able to, uh, continue living, living this life and, and kind of being around something that you enjoy so much. Right. And, for me, it's just like, I've always wanted to be around this stuff ever since I, I was introduced in uh, like early two thousands. Like, yeah, I just love four wheelers and I want to do something with it. And luckily I've been able to travel the world and do everything via riding an ATV or working on one. So mm -hmm. it's been awesome. So I can't wait, can't wait to see what the future holds. Yeah, that's awesome. I can uh, obviously relate so much to that. So um, Nick, I can't thank you enough for joining me, pal. I really appreciate it. And we look forward to welcoming you back on the show. I think it's going to be a heck of a year for the Ford brothers. So um, just obviously wishing, wishing you the best of luck, thanking you for being here with us. And um, I look forward to getting you back on soon. This is a, a really fun conversation for us. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. And yeah, anytime, feel free to let me know and I'll, I'll hop on. Appreciate it, pal. That's Ford Brothers Racing Team Mechanic Nick Hickey, brought to you by Gripped Gloves. Use discount code DIGGINGDEEP10 at gripgloves.com. Thanks again, pal. See you soon. Thanks, man. What a phenomenal episode. Frankly, I think this may be one of my favorite episodes we've ever done to date. 
Every one of those guys is so damn likable. Speaking of which, major thanks to tonight's guests, Logan Tremellen, Brandon Hogue, Jeffrey Rostrelli, Michael Allred, and Nick Hickey. Thanks to producer Dallas Jansen, my brother. Thanks to Brooke and AMA official Harv Whipple. Thanks to our sponsors, CST Tires, shop.csttires.com. Yamaha, thanks to Blue Crew, Valvoline, SSI decals, DID Racing Chain, Namira Technologies, Bronco ATV and UTV components, Launderville Steel Enterprises and Concrete Supply, Forworks Carbon, DP Brakes, Gripped Gloves, Factory 43, Bike Strikes and Quads LLC, and Manscaped get 20% off and free shipping with code DIGGINDEEP20 at manscaped.com. Support the brands that support our show and don't forget to use those codes to save. You can find them on our website and be sure to click that Rocky Bone ATV MC banner on our website to help us out. For all your off-season needs, like we said at the start of the show here, Rocky Mountain ATV MC, you're going to buy from them anyway. So click that link on our website, and that'll help us out on the back end. And most of all, thanks to you guys for listening. Our show merchandise, including Ding Deep shirts, hoodies, and more, including brand new tees that you won't want to miss in the coming weeks here, are available on our website. And if you're looking for another easy way to help support us, visit our website and click the Buy Me a Coffee button. This allows you to set up a one-time or monthly contribution to help us out. You can call us anytime to leave a voicemail at 920-569-3519 and follow the show on social media, Digging Deep ATVMX Podcast, and myself, Cody Jansen, for additional content. Like the posts that continue to motivate Brandon Hogan and others. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. You know the drill. Basically, wherever you find podcasts, you'll find the Digging Deep ATV MX podcast. All episodes, additional podcast providers, sponsor links and discount codes, our new show merchandise, and more can all be found on our website, diggingdeepatvmx.com. So check that out today. Be a friend, tell a friend. Please subscribe, rate, review. It truly does help us, guys. And with that, for Logan Tremellen, Brandon Hogue, Jeffrey Rostrelli, Michael Allred, Nick Hickey, Brooke Catherine, Dallas Jansen, and I'm your host, Cody Jansen. Thanks for listening to the number one podcast in ATV racing, nearly 2 million downloads and counting. Until next time, thanks for joining us and digging deep with the stars of ATV Motocross. Those guys were hauling ass, for real. I remember watching Doug Gus, I don't know who it was, Steel City, running the same times Friday afternoon as James Stewart was on Sunday back then at Steel City. I, I, I would need to check this out. I, I, I'm dead serious. It was mental. I've never seen quads go that fast. It's not easy, Steve. It's not easy. <laughs> Listen, JB. I don't <laughs> no, want to hear. It's not easy. I don't want to hear. Quad dudes are freaking nice. You don't want chew big red. Then. What the? <laughs> Valentine's Day is upon us, fellas, so make sure you're ready for wherever the night may take you. Our friends at Manscaped, the global leader in men's below the waist grooming, are here to tell you that you need to use the best tools for the job so you can be ready for anything on that special day. Two million men are already trusting Manscaped's products. Make sure you're one of them. Your girl can't think of what to get you this year? Tell her to get the gift that's for you and her. The best way to get started is with the Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0, full of the best products to keep you looking, smelling, and feeling nice. The Perfect Package 3.0 is led by the revolutionary third generation lawnmower 3.0 trimmer which features a cutting edge and skin safe ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. It's also waterproof which prevents a mess on the bathroom floor and in the sink especially when it's time for Cupid to shoot his arrow. The Perfect Package 3.0 also comes with a pair of Manscaped boxers which are easily the comfiest boxers I've ever had and products to keep the boys in tip top shape. With the new refined cologne signature scent by Manscaped to top it off, this is the perfect package for your perfect package. Get 20% off plus free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com by using code DIGGINGDEEP20.